Good afternoon, everyone, or evening, or whatever, whatever it is where y'all are. Appreciate people showing up. I am very, very excited for the stream today. Jake Beardsley, Pro Tour Champion, is going to hang out for a little bit. We're going to maybe watch some of his matches. Colby, what's up? How's it going? Uh, also excited because I have a couple of uh, very goofy like stream animation things. I have a actually if somebody wants to do Oh, can I actually do a channel point redemption thing? Oh, good. Perfect. I guess that doesn't show up cuz I wasn't sharing my I you know, we're not in the right scene for that, but uh yeah, we got we got a little I'll I'll do it again. We got that one. Oh, I got to turn the audio on or that doesn't even work. Well, one more time. Hello there. Perfect. That's one. We've got, I got to incorporate this into channel ports because I literally just set it up. Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I haven't even, Man Traders hasn't even sent me the trade yet for this we're at 30 percent rinsing this deck okay but hold on hold on to your hats check out this command we'll we'll be you'll be seeing this a lot over the next couple of days Ooh, hold on did that not work does that not work as a Ugh, come on all right very annoying i have to set that up maybe i need to refresh this thing anyways right cool cool but i need to figure out how to what i have done wrong in setting that up as a command that, that y'all can actually do I mean, I know I can set it up as a channel point reward. I thought it was neat. Uh, all right. Turn that light on so y'all can see my face. Let Jake know that he is welcome to call at any time. Grab these cards. Okay, Jake is ready. Let's just finish this Mana Traders trade. We may not play actually play any scam did. I don't know exactly like what we're gonna have time for, because I think it's probably more interesting to go over his matches like we did with Dom. Alright. Start a video call. Hello. Hey. Uh, it's still thinking on your picture, but it's probably start... not gonna load up the webcam because my my camera is being used by uh, Streamlabs right now. So. No oh, duh. And I. You I, can tell I've I've never done this. No, no, you're good. And I like I should set it up. I I should like have a, a like a software that sends it on to like both Streamlabs and to discord so that i think that that's something i should set up for the future um let me get this and just turn off my camera from there pop this out and then i'll get your camera on stream this is also something that i'm just kind of like you know feeling out and trying to figure out the right way of doing it and stuff but sure how's it going oh, i'm i'm glad i was able to uh glad i was able to get out of work earlier than i thought i was yeah no i i i'm glad that you were able to do this at all let's see oh i'm i'm thrilled i've 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 been a big fan of the podcast and the stream for a long time so getting to do this is is pretty exciting i think that's very cool that you listen to the podcast and i you know don't expect you to 
uh, <laughs> to, to say that or anything, but I, I, I really appreciate uh, you saying that for sure. This, ooh, it doesn't want to capture that, huh? Interesting. All right, what if I do this? No, no, no. Okay, so, ooh, okay, that's starting. Oh, I see, I see, because Discord puts the, like, kind of puts it away if you have the window minimized. So I have to figure out, or, like, not focused. Sorry, this is something that I am kind of well, figuring out. No, you're all time. good. No, no problem. I do think that it's more that it. engaging when we have like your camera up. So I want to make sure to do that right. For Probably sure. should have done a test run of it, but you know. Let's see if we do this and then we put you here hmm I'm gonna turn off my camera I'm gonna turn off my camera real quick I gotta go grab something to yeah you're fine Yeah, I'm taking chat off screen. I'll just have our cameras. Good evening, y'all. Yeah, there there is also a, a stream with Dom, which reminds me that I need to actually upload that to YouTube to give it a more permanent home. Okay, this should work at least temporarily. And then if I pull up the VOD. The we're tables back. here against Amulet Time. All right, we're, we're getting there. I think I have your webcam set up in a way that will work. You look fantastic. And then we've got the broadcast up. So what, you know, there's, there's like a lot of ways that we can do this. I, you know, we could talk about like how the tournament went. I did just listen to your episode of the Bolt Zone so uh which was very good uh well Thanks. well done uh thank and, you and uh so if anybody wants to just kind of like you know get that like podcast vibe and the sort of story of the tournament and prep and stuff like that that that's a good place to, to get that um i'm certainly down to just like talk through anything about the tournament but it it might be a little easier too to just like do the same thing that i was doing with dom and kind of like watch your matches and talk about what you were thinking during it and I, like you know i'm open to that and then i'm also totally down to just play some some rectos matches together on uh some leagues or anything like that any and all of those sound good i mean we can ask we can ask chat what they want to do we can i'm i'm pretty flexible i like i can certainly try and and offer some amount of of like my thoughts on the way on, on like matches or something, but I don't necessarily like, I, I think that might be more useful for, for like someone like Dom with amulet. Whereas like a lot of the, the scam lines are, Oh, we have scam in our opening hand. We should probably do that. Yeah. But that was not all, all of your games by any stretch of the imagination. 
I mean, then then yeah, let's we can go through we can go the, go through my matches. Is there? Can I get that up on? Only try and get yeah, that up on me, my screen if there's. Let me share my screen with you. Great. And I I apologize for any cat screaming in the background. <laughs> uh, the amount of times the dog like runs up and so so I have my dog's crate in my office because it's kind of the only place that makes sense to keep it. But that means this is her bedroom too. So you mm -hmm. know when she wants to come in, she'll just scratch at the door until I can <laughs> let her in. When she wants to go out, she'll scratch at the door until I can let her out. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's uh we're we're all doing this from home. What is your uh what do you do for work? Uh so I'm I'm actually a grad student in statistics at Virginia Tech. Yeah. Um I'm picking up an internship with Volvo right now as a as an analyst. Oh, very cool. <laughs> and you're doing that back home, right? Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, in, in Roanoke. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, cool, cool. All right, so quarterfinals versus Marco on Rhinos. I mean, before we start anything, like, what are you thinking about, like, in the scam versus Rhinos matchup? Uh, um, so the the couple of things that that immediately come to mind are scam. Saying scam is at its worst is the wrong way to put it because, like scams never necessarily bad yeah but um it rhinos is one of the decks that has the easiest time recovering from it just by virtue of right they have eight cascade spells they can suspend a footfalls on one and i probably can't kill them before that becomes a problem uh they they have some amount of early interaction even if it's just like um especially if they're on the play which in game one i'm not that worried about because i was the higher seed but they, there are certainly ways that they can go, like, turn one, land, go, and hold up both Force of Negation and, and uh, Dead Gone. Mm -hmm. um, I also don't... This is certainly a, a matchup I don't want a Fury scam. Like, his specific configuration, it's a little bit better, because he's... Uh, I think he was only on one or maybe even zero main deck Furies. So I'm a little bit more willing to go that go that route, but gone can still be kind of an issue. And a lot of the time in the Rhinos matchup, you want to save Fury. You want to save a scammed Fury for after they cast Footfalls. Sure, sure. Also, um, I'm thinking that Douthy Voidwalker is one of my best cards in the matchup. That's not what the commentators necessarily say, but <laughs> well, we'll we'll probably be watching this muted. So yeah, your your thoughts on it are are what we care about right now um sure. yeah as a like you know long time like, cascade you know, player generally uh dothy voidwalker does seem to be a, a problem card so <laughs> you know more so for living end even but uh making two rhinos by sacrificing a voidwalker yeah, does seem pretty good. pretty good yeah yeah all right, so pretty successful grief scan op grief scam opening. You got to be feeling pretty good after this. Yeah, yeah. This is this this was because I, I talked a little bit with with a couple of my teammates and a couple of my friends back home um before the quarterfinals and was just like, yeah, matchup sucks. I'm just gonna scam them, and then I did. Yeah. Like you always have that in your back pocket, right? Like no matter how bad a matchup is, you can just double thought seize them. Yeah, and, and then here it was, like, worst case scenario isn't the right word to use here, but this certainly wasn't something that I, like, wanted them, wanted my opponent to draw, just because, like, I can't interact with the footfalls very effectively now, and the rest of my hand is not amazing. I kept a one-lander just because it had the scam, because I'm not going to mulligan it. Right. But, um, also, I'm a huge fan of what, um... Del Pivo was doing with the dice, like swapping to three to two to one. I thought that was very clever. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've never seen that before with suspend cards, but I, I'm into it. Instead of looking for the number like in your upkeep each time. Yep. <laughs> Did you know Marco at all before this match? No, I um I the only interactions I had with any of the top eight were Losing to Calcano in draft, losing to Kai in draft, and IDing with Simon. Gotcha. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 you're a. Your day two draft pod was a murderer's row. Yeah, it was. It we were we were. Uh, it was it was a battle. I was I was very glad to escape that draft at, with a one two. Even even before my deck was just kind of bad anyway. <laughs> All right, so not a ton happening here. You do hit the second land to get Voidwalker into play, which is very important, and you know. You know your opponent didn't have a removal spell for it in their opening right. in his opening hand. So yeah. maybe no. this stays in play for when Rhino's hits, but you know, that's that, that's all I see going on here so far. Yeah. It's just this this is sort of scam as usual. I'm planning on just trying to give them as few turns to top deck a rhinos or a or a footfall or a yeah. cascade spell or whatever. And he finds it, which sucks, but I at least know I'm going to be able to get a Rhino's my own, and I can probably force a grief trade here, just by virtue of right. He's he is under the gun life total wise, so I can sort of force a a, a trade there, and then I cast the Rhino's, and I'm up a Rhino, which isn't a huge advantage. And I know he's going to have another Rhino coming down in a couple turns, which isn't great, but I don't have. I'm not feeling good about my position right here, but I don't feel like I have many other plays. And and I think that's one of the things that turns people off of scam a little bit is sometimes your plays feel a little bit scripted or that you only have a couple of options. So you don't feel like you have much like agency over the uh over the outcome of of certain like games or exchanges, but I don't know. I almost felt better about that because I'm right. I'm going into my first pro tour. I know that it's the best deck in the format. And at the very least, I'm I'm less likely to screw this up than trying to play like a blue black ring mirror against a real magic player. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I think that having perspective is good, but I think probably you, you, you know, a little more confidence is merited at this point. But I I do feel the same way. I've had really similar experiences and like. I know that like I'm never going to take even if it becomes actually good like I'm never going to take four color into a tournament that I care about a lot because I can't focus for that long during like the course of a whole day and I'm not trying to play a four color mirror against somebody who's better at it than me which is most four color mains so exactly and and I certainly like conversely I feel pretty good about a scam mirror. Mm -hmm. I've, I mean, I've played almost exclusively Rakdos for the lat for in, in every format for the last year. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable if we're throwing fables at each other. Sure. <laughs> so you were able to force a My grief trade, trade for a rhino, make two rhinos here. And this is this is exactly what like what was going through my mind. It doesn't feel great, mm -hmm. but it, it it's sort of the play that I have to make to kind of stay ahead or at parity with my opponent, especially given that the right the the next rhinos is coming down, and then I'm gonna have to try to try to work my way through that. Yeah. I also am thinking I don't have the inevitability here for sure. Right, another rhinos coming down. There are still theoretically six cascade spells in the deck. So there's a, a very realistic chance that I'm going to have a third Rhinos that I have to try to fight through. So my thinking with not blocking here is I just need to try and find a way to push damage and and close the game out before he can leverage the fact that he's going to end up with more Rhinos than I have. Uh, yeah, and actually, what did this? Actually, what did you think when this attack got made? Because this was really surprising to me, given that, uh, you know, j like with just the attack here with Marco at 11 and you at 18 and you with two rhinos on, on the board, I, I, I saw this attack and I thought, oh, the, the only way that this attack can make sense is like a Cascader in hand or something. Like, I, I, I just don't understand how else you make this attack. I figured that there was either another Cascader or potentially a Subtlety where he can, I, I attack with both rhinos, he flashes in Subtlety and double blocks a rhino. Sure. Um, but... I, I figured it was most likely to be a Cascade spell, which is why I end up, I think, end-stepping this Orcish Bowmasters. Whereas, right, if I think if I think it's specifically Subtlety, then I'm incentivized to wait, attack with both Rhinos, let him double block, and then tag the last damage on the Subtlety with the Bowmasters. Gotcha. But I figured it was a I figured it was a violent outburst, and then 
I mean, I, I can't do much about it. So <laughs> I, I try and I send with, um, if I remember right, I, I send with the rhinos here uh, to um, hope that he, uh, right, thinking, all right, I can at least trade off my rhinos for, these, for the, the rhinos coming off this violent outburst and then maybe, like, stitch together something else. I don't remember exactly what was in my hand here. Yeah, I know you if, have a theory like, in your hand, but I don't, I, I'm confident that you don't I am lacking in red cards. red cards. Yeah. Yep. And I do this to sort of force the issue in case, like, get some more information. Uh, my life total going from 12 to 10 here, I don't think makes enough of a difference because I have the one ones. Mm -hmm. um, so I can at least stave off the shardless agent and not be at, um, uh, not leave it at a multiple of four. Yeah, gotcha. Take the footfalls here, which means he's only got one left and I'm hoping he draws one, but <laughs> that's okay. Um... And in this spot, I, I'm still in the same boat. I think I just need to keep pushing damage. The The race certainly um, doesn't favor me here with those Rhinos coming off Suspend, but I at least once again can maybe try to get my Rhinos to trade with his. Um, and then it's a Rhino to a Bowmasters and whatever I have left. And I have that Fury, so if I can just draw a red card, I can answer the last Rhino there, and then hopefully the top of my deck's a little kinder than the, than, than the top of his. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's really all you can do. But the lower his life total is the, you know, more likely it is that you get to, you know, cheese him out at some point in this game. Exactly. I always uh, whenever Crashing Footfalls comes off suspend, I have to adjust my brain and remind myself that those rhinos can't attack this turn, even though they did come yeah. off suspend. I played too yeah, much it, Time that... Spiral Limited. I I did not play Time Spiral Limited, but I have play I did play with a lot of bad Time Spiral cards because that was all I had on my Magic Online account when I was like six. <laughs> Kindred experiences, I think. So here he's just tanking on whether how he wants to attack. Or if, really, if he wants to attack, because he's only got the one Rhino. See, I, I just did it again, right? How he wants to attack. He can attack with all three of them. He's got so many <laughs> options. attack with all three, it would be trouble, but... <laughs> it, yes, yes, it would be very bad. <laughs> but, thankfully, he can't, and we're we're just... Th this is... This is where I make the, uh, the, the attack that people on Twitter were not sure... Um, whether it was a very big risk or secretly genius and more along the line, I think it was just a really big risk, but I, once again, don't think I had many better options. Mm -hmm. yeah. I fetched here because right with three rhinos in play, five and four are not really any different. Yeah. <laughs> or five and six. His, I mean, his next attack is like pretty lethal. If, if you lose a rhino or whatever. Yeah. And so here I draw the Douthy, which is the which is what ended up uh, sort of getting me to make the attack. Okay. Is if I attack with everything and he blocks Rhino Bowmasters, I'm dead. But if I don't attack with everything and I just play Douthy and say go, he attacks with everything. I trade off two Rhinos. I'm at one and I'm still one short. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I can then hope that I draw a red card, but one of the one issue isn't necessarily the right word for it. But one of the, the things that, that came up about the version of scan that I played is it's a little bit lighter on red cards because of the fatal pushes over lightning bolts in the main. So I'm not as I can't necessarily rely on drawing the red card to pitch to the fury quite as well as maybe other builds of scam could. And then my thinking is, okay, so if I can bait him into trading the rhino, the, the two rhinos, then he goes to four, I play the Void Walker, he can't attack again next turn. Because yep. I then have lethal with the Void Walker and the Bowmasters. And, I, I mean, so I think this is a really good attack. I also think that, like, it's 100% the, like, this is the only way that you can win this game is by making this, this kind of bluff attack here or whatever. Uh, I also, also like how quickly you made the attack. 
uh, you didn't spend too much time thinking about it, which I think could about it, which communicate, a, you know, that uh, there's no bowmasters in my hand, no like, bowmasters. you know, uh, and, and I think that helped sell it and made this block that allowed you to win the game <laughs> possible. Yeah, I, I have, I, I grew up playing, uh, like, my first real competitive deck was Kithkin, so I got very used to having to attack two twos into two threes. <laughs> <laughs> and and sometimes you just gotta you just gotta sell it i guess and uh the life totals getting reversed on the screen here caused some like absolute chaos in chat at the time <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds right and then he draws the he draws the agent i check his graveyard and he's still got one left i'm like well that sucks um <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like i can deal three not here. much i can necessarily do about it mm -hmm. and and i can my my thing is okay. I can maybe make rhinos if I draw red card. I'm not dead. Mm -hmm. I also have the out of bowmasters, and then I realize I also have the out of uh of the undying effect. Yeah. Um. And just like make yeah, we makes bowmasters unblockable. <laughs> un and then this was so I did go back and watch the vod, and this this exchange um caused some some tumult in chat. He looked like he was scooping up his cards and said, okay. And my response was, is that a concession? Because I don't want to, right? I don't want to pick up my cards prematurely. It, it we, we don't necessarily, it, it, it wasn't, he, he wasn't at all hard to understand. I didn't think that was something that, that was going to happen necessarily, but I wanted to just make sure that there was, that communication was as clear as possible. Yeah. And, and I didn't. Uh, I wanted to see: Are we shortcutting to the end of the game? Is like, like, or do you have something else? What's happening? And and so I ask, and you can hear me on chat ask: Is that a concession? To which uh, a lot of people found that to be uh, bad manners, uh, bad sportsmanship, whatever. And and I, I don't necessarily agree that that was bad sportsmanship. I think that was just me trying to make sure our communication was clear but i will feel free to have your uh I, i'm more than happy to be vilified for that if that's what uh, <laughs> uh if that's what people want to do i guess yeah i mean not by me right like i think that clarity over everything is kind of my general approach to playing especially high leverage matches um and and like and th th I, I like you obviously were trying to come up with like a friendly way to say it because like you know if i'm playing with one of my friends and we're like a testing match i'd be like you're dead right but you can't say that to somebody in top you know approach like you know that that that's weird uh, yeah. with somebody you've never met before so you like is that a concession is like kind of the most formal way to ask that i, I don't know what else you're supposed to say there to be like we're done right this that's it's over nope and and i don't i don't necessarily yeah i i I mean, I, I, I think that I, I made it clear that I, I like, I try really, really hard to be clear about the way I'm communicating when I play magic. And uh, obviously uh, some part of that is I know that I talk really fast. <laughs> and, and so like, I try and announce everything. And even though it, it's kind of quick, I, I would rather like say it, even if it's like a pretty clear uh, bow master's not going to target itself sort of thing. Right. <laughs> Uh, Tom says, I learned from Twitch chat that I'm a South African cheater who should have scooped several games that I won. So, you know, ah. <laughs> Twitch chat has opinions. I'm so excited to learn all these things about you, Dom. Yeah. I didn't even know, you know, all this time I thought that, like, Dom was a Canadian originally from England, but yep. I guess I was just wrong. Now, the best part about it was, so... My dad also plays magic, and he was arguing with people, the people in Twitch chat. My son's not, no, no, my son's not being mean. Uh, here, yeah, that's, I mean, the, the turn one is pretty straightforward. I kept the hand once again on the strength of Voidwalker, plus the discard spell to try and clear a Fire Ice or a Dead Gone, and just plan on trying to use the Douthi as an effective way to trade one for one with my opponent's rhinos. Right. Kind of the only way... I mean, I guess Fury Scam is also very effective if you can put it together exactly the turn after Crashing Footfalls, but Voidwalker is by far the cleanest way to deal with a problem card like that. Yep. And... 
And so that was that was the rationale behind the hand. And same thing here. Um, we're seeing a, a fetch plus cycle to to not give me access to a draw three if I have like a feign death and nothing else to do with it. This this is the drawback which, of of playing the the four Lorian reveals as part of your mana base, right? Is sometimes you can't really afford to cycle it into a void walker that's on the board. No. And and I I never actually had it come up where I cast it. There is one uh, there was one game I think in the top eight that in in this quarterfinal that I I I reached a point where going back I think I should have cast it. Mm. Uh, I don't think it was this game. I think it was the game I lost, but I don't I I don't remember exactly. I I we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what this is for, right? Yeah. You know, re relive all of your, like, smallest mistakes, but, you know, also, you know, you, you get to watch yourself win a Pro Tour again, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then here it, it kind of sucks, because he, I mean, he, he found the, found the interactive spell, but that's, I mean, that's how it goes sometimes, you're, you're playing Scam, you're gonna have trouble with the top of the deck, that's life. Yeah. Um... But third land and fable here is not not a bad turn. It so uh, I play this and my thought process is if you have the force and force plus pitch, that's fine. That leaves you essentially out of resources, and getting and the only other real punish past that is a footfalls because it makes it much harder for me to attack with the shaman. Sure. Murktide, like okay, I guess that was also a punish, but it's. Not the biggest Murktide in the world, and uh, I'm I'm not without ways to answer it or just go around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's just, like, now there's a body in play, the footfalls is coming next turn, so, like, the pressure is kind of mounting up. You have to find some solution here to, to the board, but... Yep, but that's what Fable's for, right? right? It Dump, dump, blank, dump land thoughtsies that, that aren't necessarily doing a whole lot i find the i i, I think i found another void walker here mm -hmm. which obviously is is huge yeah very good timing on that Douth I, I found that that i had a lot of douthies just at the right time not only in the top eight but in like just the whole tournament in general and i mean sometimes that's what it takes i guess it it certainly was kind of like the card of the tournament from like the amount of times it really did it on coverage. Mm -hmm. Even excluding like turn three Ulamog. Nah, on it like that one felt uh, paradoxically the least like exciting because that in in that game that was my hand from that was my plan from the start as sure. opposed to feeling like I I figured out a, a way like. Figured out's a, not the right word because I I used my card the way it was intended to be used, but like it 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 felt like a stitch together wins a little bit more with like the footfalls than just like oh th he kept seven this hand maybe steals the game off of like take your Tron haymaker yeah which also I I like here like sorry go ahead oh go ahead no no keep keep going oh. I I'm I'm just saying like and here um same thing Bowmasters does not get Bowmasters is not a very good card in this matchup so I just want to use them in a way that like I get a damage across I stay I I keep up a little bit on board and then can uh um just use my mana as effectively as possible it also getting it down with the flabel the the, the flabel flip flipping mm -hmm. the fable flipping yes um. It is it, having it in play is obviously going to make that uh, that Douthia or the, the 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 reflection a little bit better. Although a lot of time it's just going to be better to reflect Douthy anyway. Yeah. The uh, the cast your footfalls straight into exile. Cast another footfalls line is you know they they got to break that up somehow. Yep. And my thought process here, doing it, um, obviously casting the Feign Death is is good here, and and I knew he had the Ketria Trium, so my I, my thinking is this forces him to cycle it, at, which means he can't cascade this turn if he has if he draws the Violent Outburst, and I'm I'm still getting the uh the Void Walker back, even if uh 
And worst case scenario, he draws removal spell off the Triome, and I can still at least crack it and get the footfalls back, trade the footfalls, trade the rhinos for the rhinos, and then uh, yeah. from there. And then this but way, the removal spell is aimed at your Void Walker and not at the Reflection, which could be more valuable going forward. Yeah, and the, the, the previous one was me asking the judge, can my... Uh, can, I, I, I was pretty sure you can cast either half of Dead Gone off of the Void Walker, but I wanted to double check because... Void Walker's weird. Split cards are weird. Yeah. PSA for everyone at home: always ask a judge. <laughs> um, earlier, I was just gonna say that I liked uh, Calcano's tweet when he was like, "When you pass the turn on on turn one, I I knew I was fucked. I knew you were just casting this Ulam." Yeah, he um, it, he I I played land and he passed, and his face almost like twitched because you could like and, and i could kind of tell oh he didn't like that play <laughs> and then i played the void walker and he kind of slumped and i was like oh yeah he's cooked <laughs> all right so right here trail. the boseju was it's, it's a it's it's a little unfortunate because boseju especially in this like blood moon's not really a a, a, a magic card in this matchup so mm -hmm. really boseju only has the fables as like great targets at least in game one so felt a little bad that, that he got a use out of it or he got to turn a land into a spell but i'm still feeling really far ahead right now yeah because that void walker just represents another crashing footfalls the only thing is if somehow you get cheesed out by this murktide regent but Dude, i've got the the void walker has that covered yeah. and then i have another void walker and the croaks uh yeah, to so plenty of reasons to make sure that this game's yeah, to make sure that this game's this game's locked up. Vaughn, the Merc Tide, and then like you can't even recast it because the Void Walker keeps everything in exile, and that that's the, the game's pretty over here, and, and Pivo knows that. Yeah, so nice start. I mean, can't hate winning both pre-board games in like your worst matchup in the top eight and you know that's that's not bad yeah no it it felt pretty good um mm. and so and even here like on the draw the rags much worse but i still feel good about my hand right i've got i've got resources i've got chalice i have a threat that he has to answer on to um in the ragavan and 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 what's your board plan uh, like board in this matchup like since it. we're going to post board games? Where's the hold on? If you give me one second, I have my sideboard guide right here. Perfect. <laughs> so in the Rhinos matchup, I was cutting one moon, three fable, four bowmaster, and bringing in three chalice, two explosives, two shieldred, and a terminate. Gotcha. Um, yeah. terminate yeah. doesn't feel good, but having more answers to Rhinos is is worth it. Chalice and explosives are obviously very good, and then Shieldred is um extremely, extremely good at blocking rhinos. Yes, and also just generally also difficult for the red removal deck to take off the battlefield. Yep. Um, did you the the fact that he's on? Four... Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna ask, like, was the sideboard, uh, especially like obviously chalices are for cascade decks, but the explosives, like, was rhinos like a big part of the consideration for those? Were they more of a catch all? And you were just like, oh, I I do have a great sideboard against rhinos, or or was this like, like, yeah, this is what I was planning on. So. I basically would start every scam sideboard with two engineered explosives because it's the mo it is the answer to Sanctifier and Vec that has the most applicable answers in or that is the most applicable in other matchups. Gotcha. And this deck can't function if there ha, can't is a strong word. Has a very hard time functioning if there's a Sanctifier in play. Sure. And so you need answers to that. And then at that point, explosives has implications in uh rhinos hammer uh there there are some people that bring it in against um uh amulet just to have more answers to amulet but i didn't i i don't think we were um but there it i i would start almost every sideboard out of scam with a couple of explosives sure but ultimately that configuration is pretty whenever you're bringing seven cards in you you know that's that's not bad 
Yeah, no, it 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 felt it, it felt like it made the Rhinos match up at least 50-50. Um I played against it once in the Swiss and two owed it and then played this match, but I still would not say that Rhinos is what I'm looking to play against, but uh, if if it's there, it's there. It's it, it almost feels sort of like the way Dom was describing the the scam matchups. It's like it, it's not good, but at a certain point when you just keep beating it, you you can't feel like it's awful. Sure. And I waited up, so I didn't play the Chalice on one um for uh with, with the rationale of if he has the Boseju, he can Boseju it onto untapped cascade mm-hmm. um and then i play the douthy here to start with to see if i can bait a subtlety so that um maybe i run him out of blue cards or he even pitches the force to the subtlety to try and make sure uh try and clear the way as best i can for the chalice yeah because, yeah, yeah, the Dothy is also very threatening, so if that's your play for the turn, he's heavily incentivized to do something about it, if he can. Here, it, the, the, way, the way his hands sort of lined up is, is he does have a decent setup if he has the 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 Boseju, and that's kind of what I'm afraid of right now, is him going end-step Boseju, the Chalice, mm-hmm. untap Rhinos, just because, right, it's, he, it, he's still getting to use all of his mana every turn. Right. Which is something that, that I value pretty highly in, from, from both sides that, right, if my opponent's getting to use their mana really efficiently, I'm a little bit concerned, and if I, I my goal is to use my mana as efficiently as possible, which I think is generally an applicable thing to magic, but that that's also probably something that has been said a lot. It bears repeating. Um, discarding a, a violent outburst to this Kroxa kind of like indicates either like I don't have an answer to this chalice and maybe I have multiple cascaders in hand or, you know, I have multiple because vi- violent outbursts much better than shardless agent against the Dothy Voidwalker because you can at least get an attack in with rhinos so that there's like a lot of information you can get uh, or, or that's implied yeah. and discard this to Kroxa. So, so my conclusion was either his hand is all cascade spells and an answer, mm-hmm. all cascade spells, or that's his only cascade spell. Yeah. Which obviously that's that's a pretty wide range of things, but I figured that I figured it he probably had an endurance was was my thinking because he and and this was maybe a little bit body language driven, but he didn't seem concerned about the fact that I played a Croxa. Sure. And Croxa frequently is one of the better cards is better is is a strong word, but it's certainly a good card in the matchup because it's bigger than Rhinos. Mm-hmm. Um and, and so the fact that that he didn't sort of react to it at all uh, man either he has a really good poker face which is certainly a, a a reasonable thing for someone in the top eight of a pro tour or he probably had some way to interact with it before i could escape it so either a subtlety or an endurance there's the third option which is what happens every time somebody casts a croaks against me which is i'm like they need like two more cards for that i'm just like not like that croaks is never coming into play right i don't need to think two turns ahead in this game of magic and then two turns later i get like shocked pikachu face as croaks gets cast from the graveyard yeah and and so i this was the turn where i was thinking maybe i'm supposed to um i don't remember if i had a black card in my hand maybe that was why i didn't do it um because I did, there, there, there is the potential line, if I remember right, in the card in my hand is a black card. I can evoke the grief and then sack the Douthy, cast Lorien Revealed, and escape the Kroxa. Sure. But I did think about it and was like, that, that plays really hard into Endurance because you just respond to the grief. Or Subtlety because you respond to the grief. Yes. And he has... And then I never end up with enough cards in my graveyard, and I've sort of just pushed all my chips to the middle and lost. So that was... I, I, I think ultimately the line I took was correct, and I remembered wrong. I did not have a black card in my hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> so here I take the answer to Douthy Voidwalker, um, and I'm not... I'm not necessarily sure that that he's not supposed to respond with the dead gone here. Mm-hmm. 
but I I I don't know. He I my my thinking is okay. He's going to try and get a couple of endurances into play, but I, that to me at least where the where the game's at right now that doesn't race me. Right, both of my creatures are evasive, so either he has to play the endurance next turn, it still takes three from the Void Walker, and then I just don't attack with the grief, which feels like a pretty good setup for me. Um, but then that's not. Re- that, that's not exactly what he does and he draws the dead god off the top which eh felt sees bug happens um yeah deading that turn God, i'm still feeling oh, rather, go ahead. Than, rather than casting the endurance is it's like that's definitely a big commitment because you're spending your entire three mana on shock your dothy void walker which is is kind of daunting <laughs> but yeah i think it ends up still being correct sure but um because the way his his end lines up is instead he can cast uh endurance which okay he's still taking the same three damage and either he can attack with the endurance and take another three damage or just not attack at all which doesn't really feel like he's progressing the game any better than just dead godding the void walker yeah and and dead godding the void walker also um leaves up the uh uh cuts off the or gives him the ability to like evoke something or if he draws a removal spell then it 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 means an extra card isn't exiled and and stuff like that yeah. and i i terminated on the end step here uh i know his last card is subtlety but i think i would rather um uh just clear the creature now and force him to commit to either not attack at all or attack and acknowledge that he's taking another three from the grief because then that opens up um i've boarded out the void walker or the 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 bow masters at this point but that still opens up essentially any removal spell for being lethal Mm -hmm. and we see deep in the tank about this attack here Mm. but he probably does have to race you if he can't like kill this grief i think at this point he's drawn fury which is which makes the attack make a little bit more sense. Mm. Right, because he loses this race if he can't till, kill the <laughs> Yeah. And and now I my now my thinking is it's shieldred or bust. Because he's empty handed, so I know the shieldred kills him in his up or in his draw stat. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, he's thinking about dashed Ragavan plus removal spell here, um, because right, if if he attacks with both, and I have exactly like terminate your fury, untap dash Ragavan, and and I think just attacking with the one creature is correct. There's no reason to leave yourself dead to that as well. Yeah, because you're not getting out of this situation with like value or removal. So I mean, I guess casting a fury would be good but it would then have to trade with the endurance so yeah that it makes a lot of sense to attack the way that he did and i drew a doubt which was a turn too late mm-hmm. or i guess not a turn too late because then he just furies both of them yeah no i was I, I, yeah yeah no getting out of that one <laughs> are we going on the play huh here, here. yeah and i kept a one lander here with the ragavan on the play the thought process is he either has to commit fury evoked deal or he has to have dead gone. Um, he has the dead gone, which sucked. Um, but I at least have a chalice and a thought seize to f- or a, a thought seize and a chalice to follow it up. This hand is a little bit weird, and I I I take the dead gone here with the thought process of I have a Douthy. If I can draw another land, then this hand is real good into the or the the chalice covers me against essentially everything else he has. Yeah. I. I did think a little bit about, am I supposed to play the Chalice this turn to play around Force of Negation? Or, uh, because if I play the Chalice this turn, and it plays around Force of Negation, but plays into Boseju. Mm -hmm. And my uh, my thinking is, um, I would rather let him Force of Negation it, because his only blue card is Shardless Agent. So the way that this gets punished is if he draws exactly blue card and or, uh, draws force of negation. No, I was right. You force of negation, pitch the shardless agent. Right. I'm still answering the shardless agent with the with the chalice anyway, and then I have some time to work through the rhinos he just suspended. Yeah, and this also has the added bonus of you know he suspends the crashing footfalls without knowing that there's a chalice coming down, which you know maybe still right to suspend it and just 
you know, trust your deck to give you the answer, but maybe, you know, maybe not. I'm here like the extremely good and talented magic player I am. I draw the second land. <laughs> well, you know, you you skipped a turn. <laughs> you paid your Just dues. Just be luckier the... than your opponents. <sighs> you have to be a little bit lucky. And then here, right, I'm I, I'm feeling good about my spot. The chalice is stuck, and by playing it this turn, if he wants to besage it, like, right, he has to take the turn off to do it, and then it buys me another turn if he does have the, the Cascade spell. I also have the Voidwalker to follow it up, so I can make a decent trade. Even So he has to have removal for the chalice, and then I can still trade the Voidwalker for the Rhinos, which... And the fact that I, like, I, I'm I'm wondering if he's thinking, right, I didn't make a land drop, I have to have a decent amount of gas to follow it up now. Right. Yeah, I mean, so if part of this this sequence is Boseju the Chalice, then that unlocks your hand, too, and so that is not great for him, either. Sure, yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> if you could have vampiric tutored that to, to the top of your opponent's deck, you probably would have done that. Probably, yeah. It's like that or a land. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts he's here, wishing he had elected not to uh, suspend the footfalls. And and yep, right there we we see that he did have the Boseju and the agent mm -hmm. that that I still knew about the agent, but um, he did draw the Boseju, so I I felt. Felt good about that. And now he's in a weird spot, and, and I think the commentators got this part right. Was he's sort of in he's sort of in the spot where he he needs to figure out do I want to go sage it, potentially unlock what's in my hand, and hope I don't have the second chalice, or just eat the two mana. And he decides to eat the two mana, which I think makes sense. Um, but it does punish a potential drawn uh state spell. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and that is that is brutal, but also the the sooner he besages you, the earlier you're able to, like, cast, fab you know, whatever. I guess, you, you know, I don't know if he knows you don't have fables in your deck anymore or whatever, but at least the cards in your hand are much more castable. Yeah, yeah. And here I'm I'm thinking about do I want to evoke like scam the grief or do I want to save it to um uh to to do I want to like try and evoke the grief and scam when I know that he has uh at least one land in his hand mm -hmm. and and I uh, I decide to do that life total does matter in this matchup so the the two light the the two life from the third thoughtsies I think can catch up mm -hmm. Um, so I end up going, going that route. You try not to conveniently put yourself at a multiple of four in the Rhinos. Matchup. Yeah, exactly. And he has the answer with the fire ice, but I, uh, once again, am rewarded for choosing to stack my, uh, my my evoke trigger correctly <laughs> and get to instead save the void walker get a shardless agent which isn't amazing but it's something and then the the grief just happens uh there were people in twitch chat a little bit confused about the way that works void walker does not make you cast the spell on you have until the end of the turn to cast it so they're like oh timing restrictions apply you can't cast it and i'm like no I, I just waited until everything resolved and then cast it yeah, well, and it has to be one way or the other. Either it casts it and timing restrictions don't apply, or timing restrictions apply, which means that once you have priority yeah. with an empty stack, you can cast it. So it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. And here, the Ragavans are great draw, because it'll it, the 8 damage means that even, even if he Bosejus the Chalice, I still have him dead to the Void Walker that he can't block. 
yeah, that plus one plus one counter on the Voidwalker becoming very very relevant. There's m multiple reasons why the like unplayable draft chaff commons of Fane Death and Undying Malice get played over the uh, the the modal double faced land version Malakir Rebirth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It it turns out making my grief uh unholy heat proof and making my fury lightning bolt proof is is pretty good. And yep, here he's priced into the Boseju just to to get a rhinos into play and hope he draws an answer to to the uh the the Dathy. Which he has some, but conveniently the, the plus one plus one counter makes it so that dead gone has to be gone. Which, by fetching, then even if he has the gone to bounce it, I can replay it, and then it's still lethal. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure if the fetch there was right or not. I think it probably is, because you want to leave yourself Fury as an out anyway. Yeah. Which is what I'm, which is what I'm there. I'm like, no Fury, no Fury. Right. <laughs> Especially with two dead gones already gone, then the Fury is. And, and, and he, I think, drew a land. Yeah, so... We, we got out of there. Phew. All right. So now you are a Pro Tour semifinalist at, at, at worst. Uh, I don't know what, what's running through your head at this point. Um, mostly just, uh, I wish that. So by the time this finished, I think there were still one or two matches going. So I just kind of, it was, it was cool. They set it, they, they set up these like tables where each top eight player could, and could like they could hang out their friends or teammates or whatever could hang out so i mostly just kind of shambled back to my table and then uh tried to i think i used like tried to just focus on like use the bathroom eat some food get some water don't think about magic because <laughs> you have magic to play now again <laughs> yeah how much of a break did you i don't know what order the matches were i i mean i guess they were played not not like in an order how much of a break did you actually get between your your quarter i think i had between the the quarters and the semis i think i had like maybe an hour okay it was it was a lot but i almost it it was also the point where i just would rather not have had the break <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you you start like the brain just starts like churning and you're just like i just need to sit down and play magic and stop like doing this to myself <laughs> So here they decided to speed up me and Dom Harvey, which seems like a terrible idea. Yeah, already playing pretty fast. Also, this is like, you know, one of the more interesting matchups in the the, the top eight and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> I love a good Tron mirror as much as the next guy, but... <laughs> but to be fair, the Tron mirrors and did kind of overperform as far as like sure. viewership oh for sure goes <laughs> so so here once again i very skillfully uh chose to have the good cards in my hand <laughs> although dom's hand is not the most thought seizable since it you know has the urza saga and the gardens in it so there there is some risk here but then i i think you having the ragavan there is was just like so key for this game Yep, yeah, getting to getting to change the clock by um by a turn potentially have yeah and, and here is my my favorite play of the weekend. I decided that the one ring actually cost three mana. Wow, it's a good magic card. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dom is like, doesn't that cost? The judges didn't catch it. Dom was the one that's like, you only have three mana. And I look and I'm like, you are absolutely <laughs> right. I only have three mana. <laughs> But yeah, the 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 Ra the the Ragavan made all the difference in this game. Just like changing the clock here is super super relevant. You need, especially like amulet specifically, you need to reduce the number of draw steps they have. Mm -hmm. Um, I have the fatal push, which there's a world where maybe I'm just supposed to let it trade because it's the same uh it's the same clock, yeah. but this forces him to somehow make three blockers or kill me through the Terminate in my hand. Or I guess really four blockers because of the Terminate. Yeah. So, like, it, uh, I figured that, like, the Fatal Push probably isn't getting appreciably better since I have the Terminate anyway. 
Um, right, you can stop an Azusa from getting multiple land drops or whatever. Like, like, yeah. No. And then I'm just sitting here like, well, I've done what I can. I have this Terminate. Kill me, I guess? <laughs> You're just thinking like... Like non untapping thoughts. I don't know what what kind of thoughts you know are are the most useful for preventing Titan from coming down that turn. But Dom did not have it there. I I think ended up one mana short on any of his uh, ways of getting there. Mm -hmm. So thoughtsies, you see, double dryad, primeval Titan, summoners packed here. Yeah, my thinking is I take, because if I remember it, I had a, I think I had a grief. I, I, re I remember thinking, like, I can thought seize the other Dryad if I find another thought seize or if I have the grief. I, it, I, I have a lot of thought seizes in my deck, so my goal is to restrict your mana and force you to get to six lands to cast Titan mm -hmm. has been the way that I've found that I've won this matchup most frequently. Gotcha. Um, the ring obviously makes that a little bit less. Um, effective but it's it's been it, it's been the way that i found works the best mm -hmm. oh and if you uh for people at home that want to know how i sideboarded i cut two bowmaster one fable or I, I think i got four bowmaster one fable and brought in a terminate two blood moon one chalice or two, and two chalice sure um chalice the thought process is it cuts off summoners and here I scam away the only other two accelerants um, and say you you have to count to six. Obviously, the amulet that's going to be showing up um, changes that, but... Right. Um, but uh, with no, my, no my thinking is... No land drops or anything. You have to get most of the way there before the bounce line can finish getting you to six. Exactly. And, and my thought process is I have the grief now. And I, I, I think I, I don't remember if I had a follow up thread or not, but it might have been a fable. But but my thinking is right now, now you've just got to make your land drops and you only have two in play. So it's going to be a while before you can you can get there. And I have the doubt to follow it up. So I've got I, I've I've got a have got a quick clock. But see, that's the thing. Like every time I get scammed, I'm like, all right, I think I can beat this. And then if they play anything, any amount of power after it, I'm like, OK, yeah, I'm never getting there in time. Yep. And the ring here was the worst case scenario behind like Azusa. For sure. But eh, not much I can do about it. No. <laughs> no. And and now I, I, I have Bowmasters in my hand, so I feel like, okay, like, the the ring situation is awkward, but now I at least can really pressure you hard if you decide to draw. Sure. And and you said you, I mean, this is still uh, pre-board, but, you, like, ha, you, you said you trimmed some Bowmasters, or you took out your Bowmasters in the matchup? Yeah, it, um... Because it's just the ring is the only it card is that it's relevant yeah. against. It is good into the ring, but it is not a good threat otherwise. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, my solution to the ring is don't let them have a ring. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, the especially because of the acceleration in the amulet deck, frequently the, the they can get a ring into play before they're at... Like, like a lot of people, I think, including you, have talked about this critical life total threshold to which Bowmasters is actually a meaningful way to hate out the ring. Sure. Yep. And and because they they can get it into play on three with some consistency, it, it, I'm not clocking. I Scam can clock you fast, but it can't clock you that fast. Yeah. And he's getting out the mana counters, and I'm thinking, hmm, this is very bad. <laughs> you, you don't like to see that. When, especially when you just, you don't have Terminate up, you're just yeah. like. And yes, uh, uh, Rare Hunter, I can do some amount of advanced statistics, and I do very much so struggle counting to four. <laughs> I 
I suspect that that is uh, not a consistent problem and more just a like combination of nerves in the top eight. And also, it's just the moment of like a, a different thing happened. Like the turn was going to play out one way and then ring flips off the top and you're just like, oh, yes, of course, I'd like a ring. And you don't even like quite fully process everything that goes into that. Unfortunately, no, that actually is a consistent problem. <laughs> a lot, actually, a lot of people that do, like, upper-level math stuff, I'm better at counting than most of them. <laughs> and I'm not good at counting. It's it, a lot of... Because, right, you, you, you and, and Dom's going crazy, and I'm mostly sure I'm dead here. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's not but, looking good. Uh, yeah, but with a with a lot of people that do um do upper level math, it reaches a point where you see fewer and fewer numbers in a lot of situations sure. and you just stop counting. It just doesn't come up very much. Yeah, there's not like a lot of like of... adding small numbers together in actual statistics. <laughs> Mo like most of my work is programming yeah. at its at its basis. That makes so. sense. All right, we're we're hasting up a titan with an amulet in play. You know, there's there's only so much you can do. I, you can really just watch what's happening at this point. Yeah, and so I I don't have a clean answer to the titan, and I know I can at least get my own titan if I trade and then cast the uh the void walker, cast it with a void walker, and I do have a feign death here. So I'm I'm hoping that that we can work our way to a situation where I can double block. Get the grief back. Thought sees you again, and then I've answered the Titan. Theoretically, answered another Titan, um, and can maybe try and force through the the last bit of damage now that I'm freed up from the ring and of the Bowmasters in play to make his ring much worse. Sure. Now, do you read anything off of the lands that he gets here? Do, does this communicate anything to you, Simic Growth Chamber? Um, and the it garden? probably should have, but it didn't. I, I I kind of spaced on the concept of Odawara, especially because, it, like, right, it, it it has to have the Azusa to to do it with the way he fetched. I think the way he fetched with the Titan did a good job of disguising it. Mm -hmm. Um, I also might just be dumb, so <laughs> there's there's also that problem that I just like missed it. Um, and so I I block and I go for the line, and and the Odawara is is obviously brutal. I also don't know that, like, you can even put the Odawara in it. You know, play around Odawara, you're just also dead, right? So, you kind of have to just assume. Yeah, he probably. Have it. Yeah, and he's ordering blockers and puts the grief first. I'm like, okay, well, sure. And and it, it, at this point, I'm like, yeah, I'm like super dead. <laughs> because right now I'm taking five. I lose the orc. I don't have enough. Like I don't have enough mana to cast the to to recast the grief. <laughs> um, and I've burned my feign death that cuts off my out of fury feign death. Yep. And like. I'm in the tank here, I think, trying to convince myself that maybe there's a way out. Yeah, it was it was feeling like pretty good moments ago, but Amulet has its has a way of like yep. flipping that around. Has Jake said what he thinks about the BNR announcement? I guess we haven't talked about the BNR announcement at all. Or like almost lack thereof yet. Oh oh boy. Are you very Mer excited? Merkite gets a slight upgrade in their cantrip suite. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I don't I I don't think I don't play Merktide, so I don't super care about that. It's not reviving Storm, which would be the reason I would care about it. You're not you're and, not trying to play any Mind's Desire and Legacy? Um I I haven't really cared much about Legacy since the printing of Endurance, because I, I played Dredge and that deck is pretty bad now, and so I just don't really play Legacy anymore. <laughs> That's that's very fair. I did see uh that uh Stefan Schutz was like immediately 2-0 in a league with Mind's Desire Storm. So <laughs> sick. I like 
I'm sure that's I'm sure that's fun. Yes, I Rakdo scam is still alive. I don't see a world where they can justify to themselves to ban something out of Rakdo scam. Yeah, it seems like I, a stretch right now. Still, like obviously, I'm biased towards the the scam deck that I like. I, I like the deck. I don't want anything banned out of it. But it also like they're not going to ban Bowmasters. The card's too new and isn't ban worthy. Grief and Fury are extremely powerful cards, but I'll I guess get up on my soapbox a little bit. I think the elementals appreciably improve modern gameplay, grief included. I think they were necessary so, for making modern work as an interactive format, which it was not before the printing. So, yep. So, so I'm at I I'm on the don't get rid of elementals that just puts the format back to not being very much fun. I'm actually like so. I like. I I you know the, the, whatever like, I I can totally get not enjoying the experience of playing against Recto Scam. I often. Uh, don't enjoy the experience of playing against Rakdos scam. Yeah, yeah, but, for sure. Uh, I do kind of like the place where we're at, where Solitude is like not that because Solitude was always the one Solitude that like always the one that like I I don't know just made me feel awful when I was getting Solitude really, really hard. <laughs> you know, like Swords to Plowshares is too good for modern. Like Thoughtseize isn't too good for modern. Grief Thoughtseize is like I I don't know, but but Solitude always felt like wow they're really getting. A lot of bang for their buck with this card and and the fact that the format has kind of moved to a place where solitude is less important that has felt kind of nice to me because that one really felt tough sure, sometimes sure. could they ban one of the feign death effects i don't think that meaningfully changes racto scam <laughs> like uh, if they want to ban both of them yes the deck gets worse i have to play undying evil which means i can't undie my guy again and i have to play malachir rebirth which I really don't want to do, and if they ban Feign Death and Undying Malice, I probably stop playing Scam. But, like, what what do you achieve by that? And also, like... Also, what an insane couple of cards to have on the modern yeah, game yeah. list. Who, whoever has to write that BNR announcement <laughs> has, like, I will, I will feel bad for them for the rest of time. For having to write in all seriousness that we are banning undying malice. I would, I, I mean, I would kind of love, like, what's on the modern ban list? Oh, uh, you know, like, Cloud Post, Dread Return, Golgari Grave Troll, uh, these two, like, unplayable draft commons. I think the ring was the main ban everyone was expecting to see. Yeah, I, I don't know, the ring's fine. I was not expecting. I don't have. I, I would say that I would have been really surprised if the ring got banned. I think A, I would have been very surprised from a profit incentive standpoint, and B, I would have been really surprised because yes, it was the most played card at the Pro Tour, but it's a four mana. It like it's a four mana card. If if you if you can make your four mana card work in modern, you've earned it. <laughs> yeah. Scam is not. Scam does not let you have four mana cards very well. Like, and that's not even counting the fact that, like, it incentivizes, like, their counterspell is playable again. I don't think that's a bad thing. And now back to your regularly played. Your... I don't, you know, playable is, I, 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 I keep trying to play counterspell, but I always feel like. I, like the, I, I think the ring deck is reasonable. I, I do too. Man, I'm having trouble scrubbing to the right spot here. I actually do I think that preordain meaningfully improves the ring deck for whatever that's worth. Yeah, that that's that's a good point. I I don't remember who I was. I think Spike may have been trying to play that on stream earlier. Mm. Um, I think, but yes, I I agree. I think that's a an upgrade. And here, like, so now now I've sideboarded. So I've got the Bowmasters out of there. I have, I mean, I have Raghavan on the play, which is great. And he has the Dismember, but that's, that's okay. And in this matchup, that does me that, that does change my approach with scamming Fury. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and because it was Obedeckless, I, right. I know the Dismembers are there, so I don't want to scam Fury at this point. Um, uh, hitting Slayer Stronghold felt great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
And here, so my thought process behind taking, uh, I end up taking one of the rings, and my thinking is, the ring is uh, it, the the ring is one of the like one of the few cards that right thought seizing a multiple actually does something right. It, it takes an extra turn off of it. Some people had thought like, well, oh oh, maybe he's gonna cast the ring. I I don't want to cast the ring here. I would rather just keep attacking with my three two. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not grinding out amulet. Right, and especially so, with that four damage that he took off of the dismember, like you're yep. you're getting there. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm I mean, feeling really. Like, I think you were in chat when Dom and I were going over this, like, t- going back and forth about, and, and, and like, I, I think we all came to the conclusion that, like, taking the ring there was your your best bet in this spot. Like, just keeping him from chaining rings into, like, your cards not mattering anymore is just, like, the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Core Cruxian, you asked, um, how often do you actually get the turn one scam? So, I actually used my, uh, my, my school for once in my life. <laughs> Uh, the, you will have it in your opening seven, about 10% of the time. If you're willing to go to five, it's somewhere in the ballpark of 45 ish. I think if I remember right, um, I do not typically mulligan to five for the scam. I think you can, one of the, one of the benefits of the scam deck is you can win a very reasonable game. Like I'm doing here without scamming them on one. And, uh, now, to be fair, I had, uh, I, I would, and and I didn't track this in the tournament, but if I had to guess, I had it more often than 10% of the time, or for 30% of the time somewhere, I had it more often than my mulligans should have, than, I had it, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to word no, this without. I, I get what you're it, saying, you, you, no I mean, at, at the core of it is just, you ran a little hot, like, you scammed a little yeah. more often than on average you would, but, like, when when you top eight a pro tour, part of that is running a little bit hot. Like when you, if you're going to like top eight pioneer regionals with Rakdos mid range, like you're going to go thought season to fable into blood tithe harvester into fable of the mirror breaker a little more often than everybody else did. Like, yep. And, and so I would, I mean, it's not something that you, I think should rely on or mulligan to. It's just the, the deck is all about power spikes. And it's just one of the power spikes that's available to your deck. And speaking of power spikes, you do loot into a Blood Moon here and play it against Amulet as you're pressuring and and trying to not die to the One Ring. And and now Dom is in the spot where he has to like do a lot of math and and figure things out. But he does have the second ring here, which if he had the third ring, he probably would have been able to figure out a way out of this game. So, yeah, so he he certainly would have had uh, he certainly would have had a lot of looks at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember what exactly was in his hand, but yeah, but with an amulet in play, like all he needs to do is no. figure out a way to get your blood moon off the table, and then. Mm-hmm. And I'll take my free treasure and pass. And um, some people are like, maybe I was supposed to cast the ring that turn because I have lethal anyway. My thought process is if the game keeps going, I can then start reflecting the Douthi and I'd rather wait the turn and then do that with the ring. And then I can sort of set up my own ring lock. Sure. Yeah, I gotcha. But it doesn't matter. He doesn't have the fourth ring and we are on to the next one. Then, yeah, Fountain is... I was a little bit... I, I, I was not thrilled to see the Radiant Fountain here. It's... A lot of the time, the games against Amulet are close enough that a Fountain bounce a Fountain is enough to buy that one critical turn. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, and we saw uh, a different... You know, in this game, that's part of the plan. We did see another... Uh, match that Dom played where like that was a, a really important part of it is just the four extra life off of a fountain it meant that like the scam opponent could not do it to him in time mm-hmm. and so here I think I end up taking the same approach just yep take the take the accelerant 
Terra Sunder's obviously good into a Blood Moon, and he has the Forest already. Um, but I, I, while Blood Moon is really good, I try not to structure my entire game plan around it because I know that it. Dom Harvey has made it to the semifinals of the Pro Tour, playing a deck that is very vulnerable to Blood Moon. He is not just going to lose to a Blood Moon, right? <laughs> yeah, you can and use Terra Sunder is awkward, but yeah, and Terra Sunder is certainly a card that. Other than Blood Moon, I can do a decent job of stranding there. Mm -hmm. And he draws the Azuso, which I was like, well, that that was the that was very not ideal. Because right, he gets the bounce, he gets the, the fountain. Now he has two Titans in hand and just needs a land at this point. And he's at 24, so, which is like a spooky yeah. high life total for yeah, your opponent it, to be at. It, it feels like a million at this point. <laughs> yeah. Because other games on this turn, Dom was at 11 or something like that, so. Yeah. And here I'm thinking a lot about, do I want to Raghavan and maybe trade with the Azusa? That doesn't feel great. Do I want to just get the Fable down and maybe let him tear, asun tear it asunder? In the hopes that I can draw Blood Moon the next turn? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I, I decide to... um. Go for the, uh, I think I'd go for the Thoughtseize start making Titans plan. Because I, I drew the Faint Death for turn. Yep. Yeah, and your attack for, uh, although attacking with Dothy Voidwalker usually part of a plan, attacking for three unblockable damage when your opponent is at 24 is not the most exciting thing in the world. I'm not feeling like I have eight turns of that. Yeah. Not when your opponent is one mana away from casting that Titan. <laughs> Even their 30-something land deck. Um, and here we go. People, uh, uh, I think Dom even asks, Castle Lockthwain? And and no, I am I subscribe to the Jarvis U school of never ever put Castle Lockthwain in your deck. Not in Pioneer either. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um... And so we've we get we get the black cleave cliffs out of the deck because they're worse than my other land. So so punished for building your deck properly. And uh and I I get lucky, I fade it, and I draw the thought season. I'm like, okay, we've got the Titans, this game's over. And he draws the third Titan, which I'm like, I still feel really good at this point, but the third Titan means I could just still die at random. Yes. If he had to draw not a land, then Titan kind of the only reasonable card for him yeah. to have drawn there. Anything else, and he would he would just kind of be way way behind. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did. Uh, I do have another feign death here, so we're we're still in make a we're we're still in make Titans mode. <laughs> right. I felt bad because I presented and then did it, and I was like, wait, no, I could have shortcutted this. Every I'm time so I sorry. forget to shortcut that, I'm just like, I, I like always apologize to my opponent afterward when I forget. Especially like, right, especially because it's like it's his Titans, yeah. and I'm just like feeling like the worst person <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> and and I'm in just I'm gonna play my cards and and try and kill you from here and if you don't draw it, that, that makes it really easy. If you do draw it, well, you can maybe bounce the Oda War off a of bounce land and then trade a Titan, bounce your own Titan, and then I can make another Titan, but you 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 certainly getting the first Titan is the first step to him getting out of this. Yes, but of course the fact that he doesn't have an amulet in play makes like the range of things that he can do like just way less spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think part of I think part of it is um it felt a little bit scarier in the moment because a he's Dom Harvey playing Amulet, so I will never ever assume that I, I'm I have it locked up. Right. And the um the Odawara on the other side had me really nervous. Right. Because you do uh, have his Titans in play on your side of the board. Yeah. You know. I also was kind of in, like, I, I, I didn't think the game was over, but I was in, 
we're way ahead. I need to do what I can to not lose this. Like, I, I want to try and make the 90% to 100. Yeah. Right. Th these are the games that when you lose them, you go back and you're like, where did I fuck that up? Like, yeah. Or really almost more what it would be is, where did I fuck that up? And then I go back home and my three friends are like, dude, I know exactly how you fucked that up. Thank you. I know that I should listen to you and incorporate this, but I'm not ready for that experience quite yet. <laughs> exactly. And so he's... I, I mean, Tom's doing what he does best, and I'm just kind of hoping that that we don't find uh, um, that that he doesn't find a way out. And him picking up the radiant fountain was really awkward because it made it so that he could trade the titans and not die. But it felt good in that I think he had to trade the Azusa as or. Er, yeah, he he might not have had to trade the Azusa. I mean, uh, block yeah, there, I, block there. 10, I believe 12. that getting the Radiant Fountain, the point of that is so that he doesn't have to block with the Azusa if you don't have anything. Yeah. And then and then he can try and set up a next turn bounce land, bounce Titan, start taking game actions, and mm -hmm. then I just once again very skillfully <laughs> top deck the exact card I need to draw. And that's the match. Terminate to... And, I mean, you know, did you visualize the... Uh, I, I bet this Terminate will let my two Primeval Titans get through when you're putting it, sleeving up the Terminate. This is this is what this is going to do, right? Um, it, It's somewhere in the range of this is what this... Uh, this is what this Terminate will... Uh, this, is, this is what will make sure that the two Primeval Titans I've stolen have done. Yeah. This is me asking my teammate, can you please go find me a new pack of sleeves? <laughs> the, the, the other best part, the, uh, I went back and watched that, and, and the best part of Twitch chat in this moment is, they thought I was proposing to my girlfriend. That's amazing. And I was, first of all, no, I would never ever do that at, at a, a magic, magic tournament. tournament. That's a horrible idea. I mean, and two... It's possible to get emotionally lost in the sauce when you're like in a, t but yes, that would be a, a certifiably insane thing to do. Um, but the, uh, but no, really what was happening was I had, I had sleeve, uh, they had asked me to re-sleeve my deck because I am, I, I will be the first to admit I'm extremely hard on sleeves. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um they said here's a here's a pack of the the like sleeves that they hand out as part of like your magic con stuff. So I resleeved it and put it in there, but after eight games of it, I'm splitting sleeves left and right while I'm playing against Dom. Gotcha. And so the first thing I do after I finish the match is can someone please go buy me a pack of sleeves? <laughs> So now your deck is resleeved. You're in the finals. And my thinking is, well, um, I would like to scam them, question mark. Yeah. And and I mean, so I, I guess like before we just like go d right into the game. So what are you thinking going in? You know, this is not the handshake build of the deck. So, you know, you don't need to deal with main deck dismembers, I guess, are the main thing. Like what, what else are you thinking about going into this, this match for the finals? Um, so the scam, uh, my, my, my plan going into the finals or into this match is scam fury on what is my best play. And actually in this game, you see, I choose between Grief Scam and Fury Scam. And I make a small error here. I gr I should have played land, Grief Pitched, Thoughtseize, and then seen what happened. And and if the Fury Scam line ends up being good or not. It turns out the Fury Scam, I still would have gone for the Fury Scam line anyway. um, Because of, of the context of his hand. Other things that I was thinking going into this match were, um, thank God I'm actually getting to sit down and play Magic because it was somewhere in the ballpark of almost two hours Oof. of waiting after I finished my match with Dom. God. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's so, tough. I mean, at, at one point, um, 
my girlfriend Claire, like, ta- like I'm just kind of sitting there in a fugue state, and she's like, you're gonna start spiraling, you need to, like, get up and at least, like, walk around. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's hard to know what to do. It, it, yeah. I I am I get much more nervous if I am just sitting there than at least even even like even like that if I'm just at least shambling around the convention center there's some amount of, of visual and auditory stimulation. <laughs> and here I, I think a lot about what I want to do and and ultimately I I conclude that that the fury scam is is the way to go just because i um so i i i am friends with uh matt como aka bomat courier who has played a lot of tron with the ring and a lot of the matches that we played the best possible route to take was just scamming fury on one so that was a, uh, ultimately where i ended up going just from experience and uh, i i still think it was the right play i do think i was supposed to evoke the grief first pitching the push yeah but against almost any configuration of seven cards that could be in Calcano's hand, Grief is your best turn one play. Because, again, no dismembers in the deck. He doesn't have a way of just, like, stopping the, the Fury there. Yeah, Fury is Fury is for sure the, for sure the play. Um, unfortunately, he draws the third Tron piece, which, I mean, it'd be like that. Well, I mean, this is why, the this is why grief was... scam on turn one is worse than fury scam on turn one. Sometimes you just can't take yeah. anything important. And the the warping whale here is is actually um because I I think I end up thought seizing him here and I see the whale and I'm like, well, that's really awkward because it it gives him a blocker which buys him that t- another turn to get to the Ugin or the Ulamog. Yeah. So what? I mean. The, it it is a lot of payoffs. There's only one payoff that he can cast next turn. But yeah, that warping whale is two mana gain eight life, which is you know pretty strong. Uh, but Karn is is a, a tough one to beat, and also the one that he could cast this turn in combination with warping whale. And I ultimately think I I did make another small error. I think I was supposed to um take the I think I was supposed to evoke the grief, take the warping whale. Mm. Um, my, I think my, my thought process is, my, my thought process there is, I hope he draws blank and then warping whales and blocks, and then if I draw a fame death, I can scam both of the, the other threats out, the Ugin and the Ulamog. Yeah. And unfortunately, he then draws the actual biggest punish for it, which is, or, or he draws the sphere, which I think then draws the, I don't know. He plays a one ring here, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that was the absolute biggest punish. Right, because that stops you from dealing damage, oh. also stops you from griefing him this turn. Yep. I mean, obviously... The One Ring is the fuel behind the entirety of the Tron Renaissance that we are experiencing. Gives them this, like, mid... I don't even know if it's the mid-game when it's getting cast on turn three or whatever, but this, like, mid-mana value bridge towards the big spells. Yeah, the the fact that it makes their non-Tron hands also just good at being a control deck is super, super brutal. Yeah, it also means that they like don't have to mulligan as aggressively in a lot of matchups as as they formerly had to just to function because you can do these d- different sequencing patterns than than just like okay. try to rocket to turn three Tron. Yeah, and I'm feeling at this point I'm feeling super far behind because now I know that if he wants to the the like. It, it, he if he wants to he can just go land Ugin, which the, with an active ring in play like he's at twelve but that's still a fair amount of life mm-hmm. and an Ulamog coming down theoretically soon, so I'm feeling very very far behind. Yeah, and and there's yeah. with ring protection this turn there's so little that your deck can actually do right now. 
you know, and drawing the duplicate fury is not fixing a whole lot. Right. <laughs> Can't really do much other than pass, and, and now he's got cards coming, and I'm feeling very bad about my decision. And actually, one of my friends mentioned that that this was the spot where he was like, oh, I hope Jake doesn't start getting in his head. Yeah. Because I, I for a long time, I have had uh, uh, what has been described as a weak mental game. <laughs> well, I know you were talking on the podcast about how you have been trying very, very hard to just take it one game at a time and just like forget everything except for I am playing magic in this game right now. Yeah, and and that I I really started trying to think about that and do that um starting with the first regionals I qualified for in San Diego and I have had pretty good results since I I did I top 32 San Diego day 2 Dallas and then obviously did okay here. Um yeah, it did it did all right. And I I have I I have found that that has been a a pretty big I guess level up um is just trying to have a short memory and um uh Benton Madsen after he got second at the Pro Tour wrote wrote his article on take care of yourself between rounds it helps mm -hmm. and he plot twist guy that got second at a Pro Tour knew what he was talking about <laughs> and and so those have been like i think pretty pretty measurable improvements in my ability to play, ability to play for extended periods of time. And in the meantime, I'm just getting trond and not much I can do about it. Yeah, so Calc, rather Calc than going for an Ugin here, draws the Karn this turn and is able to lay down a bridge, play multiple spells this turn, and put together yeah. like a pretty scary set of stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm. I'm going to have a really hard time getting out from under this because my main deck has no answers to ensnaring bridge. Actually, my 75 has no ways to remove an ensnaring bridge. Right. So my thinking now is, okay, I have to find some way to get Fable. I, I need to hope I draw Fable or draw Red Card to answer the Karn and hope that either the ring somehow burns him out or I can get some sort of Fable plus Bowmasters going. Mm-hmm. Um, which I know are obviously both huge long shots. And I do draw the Fable, but I have to get the Karn off the table first. Right. Yeah, or it just plays like a Worm Coil engine or something that you just can't mm -hmm. be, can't ever beat. Yeah. I guess Worm Coil engine with a bridge in play is like a very weird thing, but like, you know. Yeah, it, um... Almost the scariest thing here, I think, is Haywire Might. Sure. Um, because it, it give he can just sit on the Haywire Might for a turn or two until he gets the Ulamog in play. And the Haywire Might giving him an out to his own ring is is scary. Here I'm taking that and hoping I can draw Thoughtseize to take the Ulamog mm -hmm. the next turn. And I'm very much so in a it feels so close but so far situation. <laughs> right. You've got eight power in play. Your opponent's at ten, like Yeah. The the ring is slowly ticking him down, but Oh Ryan time strategy. Oh no, thank you guys for, for having me. I, I I enjoy getting to talk about Rakdos scam probably more than most sane people do. <laughs> so Calc hitting, had a one ring, or drew a one ring for the turn, and then off of his ring hit another Karn, another so just kind Karn. of an embarrassment of yep. riches here. Yeah, I have, I, I, I am very, very uh, <laughs> in trouble here. <laughs> And and honestly, I think um, going back to the the thing with like 
um like my my mental I, my mental or whatever i think the other thing that that at one point would have been a problem and is something that that i've tried to work on is i play a lot of decks that can end up in this situation where i'm just like sitting here i have nothing that i can do to get out of this but i don't feel like i can justify conceding because i theoretically have an out yeah and i would say if that's gonna tilt you it's better to just concede that that once you're like sub five percent in in this game especially in like a best three of five just picking up your cards and not letting it bother you is going to be way better than sitting there for another five to ten minutes while your opponent slowly finds some way to actually win the game and getting progressively more frustrated that you're stuck sitting there yeah i mean i definitely definitely. so when i am in these games where i'm just like i have lost this game like it generally doesn't cost me because like my tilt meter increases when like like when i just like watch equity disappear like if i felt like i was favored in a game and then two draw steps later i'm way behind then i'm like oh god what happened like then that starts to... if i know i'm dead then usually playing more turns doesn't like crush me in that same way i'm just like yeah of course sure. I didn't top deck like three like my my like I, I had to runner 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 them or whatever mm -hmm. um what what i've also found too is that my when i am successfully engaging in one game at a time and don't think about like what this game represents or anything like if it's like yeah i i am in in the running for top eight as long as i just like don't lose more than i will like continue I, i'm likely to top eight this tournament or whatever like once i have that in my head that obviously that's bad for a bunch of reasons but like one of the things that really helps me not tilt and also to just like be more of a human being and more pleasant to my opponents and stuff. It, like I, I get really frustrated with myself when after a match, I am not like as nice as I can be to my opponent. Like, you know, we're all there playing magic. I'm in friends. the exact same boat. And, and sometimes when I get frustrated, I don't treat my opponents with the level of, you know, I'm never mean or anything, but sometimes I'm not as kind and not as polite as I feel that I should you know as an ideal version of myself would be and so to me that's that's often like the biggest reason to find these methods of reducing any level of tilt in myself is like i want to be i i want everybody to walk away from playing against me like like happy without it. you know i don't want anybody to feel no, bad I'm, afterward yeah you know, I'm, I'm in the exact same boat i kept like one of the one of the things that I kept sort of repeating to myself is like I want to be someone that when I come back to like especially once I had requalified but but I I knew that like at some point I would try to and hopefully succeed at making it back to the pro tour regardless of how this event went mm -hmm. is I would like to be someone that when I come back my opponents are oh oh hey you're back it's good to see you regardless of the outcome of the match yeah because yeah we are all trying to do the same thing and like you are more like the person sitting across from you at that table than you are to like almost anybody else that you're going to meet in any other situation exactly and so after losing game one i like obviously i'm not happy about losing game one but my thinking is that that I'm gonna struggle isn't the right word because I still think that the matchup is at least a little bit favored for scam, but the way I'm gonna lose a lot of the time is on the draw, mm -hmm. just by virtue of the fury scam can't close as well, um, because they they get at least I think two turns with Tron before it's actually lethal. Um, yeah. It's just and and so it was oh. less when when you're on the play and you put the eight four into play on turn one and they play their first land as they're about to get attacked for eight for the first time it's like yes th this is fast enough this will get there yeah but when I know that there's a very real chance that I put it into play on my turn one after they've played their first Tron land they have their second and set up their third Tron land I get to hit them for eight and they get to ensnaring bridge me it doesn't feel or in Saring Bridge or Car or Worm Coil or whatever it 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 feels much much less yes. comfortable. <laughs> but you are on the play here, and so how aggressively are you mulliganing? 
Uh, not very. Okay. Un, uh, like, uh, I will mulligan a hand that doesn't have pressure, mm -hmm. but I will not mulligan a hand that has a decent amount of pressure with a little bit of disruption. Yeah. And this hand did. It wasn't amazingly fast with the, uh, when when my threats are Bowmasters and Douthy, it's it's obviously not the fastest hand in the world, but I have the thoughts these are followed up, and in my head I'm thinking, this hand also, so this hand is going to do one of two things. Either I can Thoughtsies on one followed up with a Douthy if my opponent mulligans a lot, something mm -hmm. that Tron certainly does, right? I can Thoughtseize a map or a scrying and really disrupt turn three Tron and follow it up with a, a reasonably fast clock of Douthy into Bowmasters. Or if he keeps a, uh, if he keeps a six or a seven, that means he probably has turn three Tron and there's a decent chance he has a payoff. Sure. At which point I can hold the Thoughtseize and try to high roll him out of the game with the Douthy. And I played Land Go, and he kind of slumped it. <laughs> his his face sort of twitched isn't the right word, but I could I could sort of read on his face that he's like, oh, that's not what I wanted to see. Yeah. I mean you can And then I sort of and didn't make a turn one play. There are only so many hands that that makes yeah. sense with. And and I sort of was like, okay, well, I can sort of smell blood. <laughs> I I do like that kind of like adjustable plan here based on how much your opponent has mulligan. I think that makes a ton of sense. And I didn't really even think about that. But yeah, if you know, Tron when it mulligans to five or four. Like, usually what you're pitching from your hand are your payoffs, because you're just trying to get to Tron, your deck mm -hmm. will give you payoffs at some point. So that, that makes a ton of sense to change your sequencing in that situation. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and, and I play the Douthy, and he's sort of... Mm, yeah. <laughs> just and, and then I'm thinking, oh, I've... I'm... He's got something. Yep. I mean, even a Karn the Great Creator, like, shuts down so many cards in his deck just by being a stony exactly. silence. And, uh, this is still pre-board, so I did have a Pithing Needle to go grab. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> we did see, uh, it sort of was K Kasaka have a ring in his sideboard that he got with Karn multiple times over the course of the tournament. <laughs> I did not see that, but that is hilarious. Yeah. And here I thought about playing the Kroxa first and then was like, no, nah, I'll just. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> and and here. No, nothing matters. Here is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here is what might be the best coverage moment of the weekend. And and I cannot express how much I appreciated how good of a sport he was about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like how you're like writing down the hand here because you have to like you can't not write down the hand here but it's also like fundamentally completely irrelevant to the rest of this game yeah i like and and i do the same thing here i play the croak so before the void walker's gone because it's technically correct yeah. and i like i i don't want to uh, i'm i'm obviously pretty sure the game's over because i'm gonna cast a new walk on turn three but i i don't want to a just be like oh i did the thing look at how great it is but i all and and i i don't want to like, like we were talking about i, I want to make sure that it's not uh it doesn't he doesn't leave he doesn't leave the game feeling bad about it in some way other than the fact that he got to turn three a little It's also Kelcano, so like none of these, none of the game actions that you take are ever going to like be a thing that he would hold. You know, yeah, no. It he I played against him on day one or on or in round one of day two, mm -hmm. and we played a pretty close three game set in draft, and it was extremely extremely nice. And especially given, like, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm playing in the feature match area in my first pro tour. And I, I mean, it, it was we, we had a we had a pretty good laugh because I a lot of people I, I would ask, like, oh, how many pro tours have you played? Just like as the the bright eyed little kid who it's his first pro tour. Mm -hmm. And and he's like, I think, like, 39. <laughs> and I'm like, that is, and I'm I'm like, my mind is blown because I'm like, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. 
and and that that I think like that exchange left I think both of us I think I think we both had had a better a better time out of all of it just from even just from that little interaction because right it's it's he's he's getting somebody who recognizes him I'm getting to meet somebody who I've grown up watching I like I told him I, I remember watching him make the top eight in um, at PT Amonkhet just from my living room and being like, I want to be there someday. Yeah, yeah. That was a wild PT. The uh, simultaneously, like, Marvel and Zombies were both playable, which is a thing that yeah. I never quite... <laughs> I like I I get like conceptually that zombies can aggro out a Marvel deck, but that just seems like it, like a totally insane thing to be true. Hannon Grace asks me, "What is it like to have all women want me and all men want to be me?" Um, I uh, I don't know. I'll I'll just I'll just refer to that with what Claire just said to me after she overheard that with "Who wants you." <laughs> <laughs> brutal i, I bet there's like i think that that question is a little uh restricted though because like why wouldn't there be men that want you to like that like come on let's not cut out a whole i i i, I don't uh as as magic's number one syndicated nationally syndicated wife guy mm -hmm. i do not acknowledge any sort of advances from any individual that is not my partner in fact in fact you you won't you wouldn't even recognize them they just go right over here yeah, i active i actively rebuff them also hey tannin how's it going yeah uh, it's uh Another another Twitch chat highlight was the repeated questions of why do they keep panning to that one woman? <laughs> uh, I'm a big Tannen fan, so so it looks like we're 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 on the same page there. <laughs> I remember going to a uh, a Laker game with Tannen when I was I think still like in junior high. So that was that was really cool. Yeah, because yeah. your your dad did a bunch of like tournament organizing and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. My dad has been around for approximately forever, and um, Claire has referred to me as a magic nepo baby, <laughs> just because I I mean, right? My dad knows Brian Kibler, and my dad knows Tan and Grace, and my dad knows Melissa Datora, and and all these people that that they looked at. Uh, they 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 got to see the the little kid trying to grab all the draft chaff he could. It's like a classic experience. We've all been in that spot. Yep. And so looking at this hand, I it's not great, but it has pretty high upside because I have the feign death and a red or black card to pitch. And worst case scenario, I at least have a Raghavan into a Void Walker mm -hmm. um, to try to set up uh, a more aggressive line. He's also mulliganing a fair amount, which means, right, he's less likely to have that key payoff on three, which makes the the Raghavan hands a little bit better. Yeah. There's also, and, you know, like on the draw and stuff, not necessarily like the biggest thing. There is a little extra upside to the Void Walker as it makes it against like Calcano's deck versus the Handshake deck as it makes like top deck chromatic stars like significantly worse. Yep. Yeah. And it's, I'm mostly just sitting here thinking, can you keep mulliganing, please? <laughs> Which I know is not the, the greatest strategic insight anyone's ever heard, but. It's, you know, every finals I've ever played, I've been sitting there just like, I know this is not the most sporting thought in the world, but I would like you to go to four here. So he did go down to five, a little bit of a sketcher in that his hand is like pretty vulnerable to hand disruption. Yeah. Of which I don't really have any, but I do have a turn one eight four. That's not bad. And 
Well, I knew that it did. Well, obviously it didn't work out game one. He's on less cards this time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping like, okay, maybe even if you have turn three Tron, I can potentially race it, especially since I have the Douthy in my hand, which, mm -hmm. at, which cuts another, which can help cut another turn off the clock. Yeah. I mean, having any additional, you know, going from, you know, three turn clock to like two turn clock or like you're dead to bow masters after this second attack is like such a key. It, it's a huge difference. Tannen asks me, what is it like to win a finals? Um, The, the context here for those that don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, no, no. I, yeah, I know but, you uh, do, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I don't know if anybody, yeah, if everybody in chat knows that Tannen has more second place finishes than like any other magic player on the planet. Um, I, I will, um, I say this as someone who has looked at, looked up to and respected you for a long time, Tannen. I don't think I've ever actually lost the finals of a magic tournament. You don't, you don't play in that many finals of a magic tournament. It's very difficult to get there. It's, it's extremely impressive to make the finals. I, I just, I haven't done it very often and I always seem to come out on top nice. because I'm probably the, <laughs> after this weekend, I'm convinced that I'm the main character of some sort of niche card game anime. Yeah, I, it does have those vibes to it. Like first, well, I guess in the card game anime, if you're the main character, you can't win your first pro tour, right? You're right. Yeah, I guess you're. You're more of like that, a Seto wait, Kaiba kind of role or something like that. I was gonna say, wait, does that mean I like? Do, does that mean I get to start some sort of large corporation and become the 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 evil capitalist that I've always sworn to hate? Would you rather do that, or would you rather do card games on motorcycles? I guess is my big question. Doesn't he also try to go to space at one point? I didn't really watch that much Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. I feel like at one point I saw a clip of him wanting to go to space. And I was, I'm on board with dueling in space. <laughs> um, And here I'm just hoping no, wor uh, no worm coil engine. And he, he does have the relic, which means it's gonna be hard for him to get out. He does have the out of Karn into Haywire might chump block. Yeah. Ring is really um, the card that he's looking for off of that draw. His his the only yeah. like, actively good thing to do once you're down to yeah. five mana here. Um so we're in the post board ones now, so the way I sideboarded yeah. uh was I caught two push, two terminate, two fable. And brought in one Shieldred, two Lightning Bolt, two Blood Moon, and one Pithing Needle. Sure. I, I like that bringing in the Lightning Bolt. Um, this is a thing that I like went to bat for a lot when, uh, when, uh, like, Is It Phoenix was, the you know, one of the main decks or the best deck in Modern or whatever. And I always saw these sideboard guides that included, like, trimming a Lightning Bolt or two against Tron. And I would, like always go into the comments and be like, please don't trim your lightning bolts against Tron. Like, you need to kill them. You need to deal the 20th damage. It's the most important thing in the world. It also, a lot of the time, you can fight through a first Karn down tick, and having the lightning bolt allows you to clear this, clear it at that point. Sure. So yeah, nowadays, even an additional use for that. Like, my, my argument for it back in the day was you are the aggro deck, you must deal 20 damage. Like, don't take your Lava Spike out of the deck when when that that's the role that you're playing. But yeah, definitely a little yeah. more utility these days as well. Oh. Yeah, and I guess... Huh. Yeah, I, I did not play Is It Phoenix until after Modern Horizons 1 came out. Mm -hmm. So I, n I only ever remember playing Phoenix when Karn was legal, and I guess I had forgotten that there was a period of time where Karn didn't exist yet and and phoenix was still like the deck yeah um I, I was feeling good here because i managed to get one on the draw being able to break serve means i'm on the play for a potential game five so i'm i'm feeling pretty good about where i'm at yeah just just gotta win one um, more and yep. you'll be on the play for one of them I also would like to give a huge shout out to the card Aria of Flame. I deeply oh, miss I, God, I, I deeply miss card. Arclight Phoenix and I deeply miss Aria of Flame. I I have a like long history with like 
you know, it got spoiled in Modern Horizons, and then like we immediately like talked about it on the cast, and I was like, "This is a two oven Phoenix sideboard. Like it fixes everything. It's just like it's so good. I'm so happy mm-hmm. about this card." And then it was, it, it was, it did exactly that. <sighs> what a bummer that that card is completely unplayable now. Yep. Just the the removal spells in Modern are just too good, and they kill everything. Yeah, pr- getting an Aria Fling Prismatic ending is rough. <laughs> or Leyline Binding, like <laughs> just a three oh, mana God. card that Ugh. gains them ten life, and then they kill for a mana. I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that exchange. Yeah, I'm. I'm I'll take. I'll take bad exchanges for six hundred <laughs> Alex. <laughs> I know we can't even play Pyromancer Ascension anymore. Can we even really play Arclight Phoenix in modern though? We cannot. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, if we get a Faithless Looting unban or even a careful study print at some point, I will I will put the effort in. But I also have I... not confident in it, you know, in like a thing in the ice arc light phoenix threat package being good enough anymore so really isn't but i still am going i still will be lobbying for a faithless looting on ban given that um uh as as a I, I like i like the card faithless looting so much that as a present claire made me a shirt that says damn i love faithless looting with the w- with the uh uh appropriate acronym to go along with it <laughs> You can say DILF on the stream. That's that's fine. Yes, certified DILF stream. <laughs> All right, so Calc's hand here. Tower, Boseju, it's... map. You know, you can't mulligan super aggressively against Rakdos, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and looking at this hand now... I'm thrilled if I'm thrilled with him keeping that hand. Mm-hmm. That is that is a very beatable hand. For sure. But it's also oh. a hand that you just can't really justify mulliganing. Especially like on the play, you get your map down and you know. Yeah, it's, cer- it's certainly hard to justify. But it is it is no like guaranteed turn three Tron type hand or anything like that. Very different play experience. I mean, Tannen, if you're still in the chat, I'm curious what your thoughts on this are. I I know you played Tron for a long time and were a, a proponent of aggressive mulliganing. What do you think about this hand if if you're still hanging around? I mean, and the hand does also have a ring in it. So like, as long as you're making land <laughs> drops, then you will get there eventually, you know, Obviously, barring hand disruption and stuff, which is very relevant. Yeah, yeah and I'm going to five, which I don't feel great about. But I also know that Scam is another deck that mulligans pretty well, um, and and can at the very least put together combinations of cards that can sort of steal the game, even off of just five cards. Yeah, Scam is good, and also Ragavan, even. On the draw, Tron is one of the like decks where like on the draw Ragavan is still like acceptable. So my thought process is my thought process here is which of these cards do I want to keep? Uh other I'm obviously keeping the two lands, the moon, and the ra yes. the, the Ragavan. But <laughs> then the question is, do I want to keep Fury to potentially draw a, a feign death? And I, uh, or do I want to keep grief to potentially draw a black card to just, um, to just try and, and strip out one of the, the good, um, the, the good payoffs and, and maybe the, the Raghavan can go a little bit, can, can kind of go the distance or even I can just play the grief on three as a follow up to the blood moon. Right. And the Raghavan giving you treasures really contributes to the possibility of just like hard casting whatever spells that you draw. No, exactly. Um, my lights are blinking due to people following me. I've, I've, I've started to construct a very complicated setup of light commands in response to different things happening. So th- thank you all for the follows. Appreciate it. Uh, 
we've got we've got some really fun ones lined up. And at this point, when he plays the Boseju, I'm I'm feeling good. He has the map, which means he can potentially get a green source or a Boseju. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna not cast the Blood Moon. I have the option to cast Fable instead, but I I do run through it a little bit, and it turns out that playing Blood Moon into Grief it ends up being a little bit of a faster clock than playing Fable into Blood Moon. Okay. Sure. Because I can't. I'm not gonna not play the the Blood Moon at least by turn three to try and cut the, to, to try and cut Tron. So I'm only going to have a window to play one threat or the other in the next couple of turns. And it turn and, and I, I ran some napkin math in my head and it turns out that uh, the, the, the three power attack, uh, the grief ended up being, I, 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 at least from what I could tell, the grief ended up being a, a better, uh, a better follow up. Sure. Which meant I wanted to play the moon on too. Yep. 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 And, you know, Calc plays the second Tron piece here, so you absolutely would have to cast the moon next turn if you hadn't casted this turn. So, yeah, that 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 all mm -hmm. makes sense. But there, there's a reason that the Tron decks are built the way that they are these days with lots of O-Stones and a couple of Wormcoil engines to play these games where, like, yeah, I got Blood Mooned, but I still have spells. I'm not just, like, dead to that. Yeah. And I think a little bit, do I want the grief or do I want the, the fable here? And I still, same conclusion. I want the grief to try and take a ring if he has land plus ring. Mm -hmm. Turns out he has the ring, not the land, but. Well, and now I think a lot here on, do I want to take the map or the ring? Mm -hmm. Um, and see if I can strand, see, see if I can strand uh, a card in his hand, maybe strand the O-Stone for a couple turns if he can't find a land, and maybe get him low enough that even if he does pop the O-Stone, I'm still in okay shape. Uh, and I end up, so I run some numbers, and it ends up being about the same, because uh, uh, he can either go crack the map, crack the first map, play the land he gets off that, play a map, then go to his next turn, crack the second map, play the land, or he can just rip a fifth land, and then he has it on five. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he has the ring, if he draws land, I'm really screwed, because he can go land, ring, into probably draw another land. Or he can go crack map, go get land, next turn play ring, probably draw it. So I leave myself um, sort of got by the potential of him drawing a land, but I'm sort of screwed either way, and one of these plays leaves him without a ring. Yeah, and I mean, I think even just the, like, he draws badly, but he can crack this map and then play a ring next turn. Like, I think that that, that line of play is so bad for you anyway, and that's just the default line mm -hmm. if he doesn't draw anything, and you're probably not favored to win the game against that, so. Yeah. And so at this point, my thinking is, I just want to try and get as much damage out of my creatures now before he can O-Stone. Sure. Yeah, and this, you know, not to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't, like, seen this or whatever, but this does end up being some of the, uh, 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 perhaps the sweetest turn, like, couple of turns in the entire tournament. Like, this this may be the, the, the wildest game of the tournament. It was, it was a very, it felt like forever. Yeah. <laughs> and all you get to do is sit there attack with your creatures each turn, sequence out your spells the best you can, and just hope that he doesn't clear out your stuff and and then do Tron things to you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't even say I, I did the sequence my spells the best I can. I didn't I didn't even do a good job of doing that, but that's all right. <laughs> I think up to here we did fine. The, the, the yeah, story. yeah, I, I'm obviously I, I the, there is the one error that that we'll talk about, but I'm I'm going to choose to give myself a little bit of grace on that, given that it's round 19 of magic. Um, 
Yeah, and even just and today, you've played a bunch of games against very strong players, and yeah. And here I play the Fable. Um, just I don't have much else I can do, and if he, I, I'm sort of choosing to believe he doesn't have another land. He doesn't draw a land. Yeah. If he draws the land, I'm sort of screwed anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, and I, being I, able to... I agree completely. I think if he O-stones this turn, you just lose, no like, Fable in your hand or Fable on the board, you lose the game. So I, I think that that's just... It's scary, but it's right. And him drawing the ring is is not a good... N not not good for me, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Now my thinking is, okay, he's got the ring, he's got potentially three looks at a land to pop the O-Stone. What can I do to, same same sort of thing, I just am sort of in the I have to hope he doesn't have it situation. And here is, so uh, I, I'm going to make that, that other error in a couple of turns, but I actually think one of the bigger mistakes I made is not keeping a Raghavan here. Okay. I end up choosing to discard both Ragavans, and I think I'm supposed to keep one so that I have a, a haste, a follow-up haste threat after the O Stone. Sure. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know if I don't know if that makes the difference or not, but I think I'm I'm once again concluding I'm dead if he gets to O Stone this turn. Or at least I'm in really bad shape. So I have to sort of hope that he can't, and then I can push the damage to get him down to three. And then maybe I can get those last couple points across with like a Bowmasters and the Ragavan with haste. And he does have a ring in play too, so that, you know, is some amount of Yeah. That does make sense, though, is is just, like, eking two more damage out of a Raghavan in hand could be really, really valuable, given where this game is likely to go. And, and yeah, this, this game was a litany of errors on my part, I think, but... I mean... And that's why we that's why we play the game, right? It's yeah, game's hard. Magic's but that's what makes it fun. Just hard. Yeah, for sure. And so as soon as Calcano just plays the sphere here, then you know, no O stone this turn. Yeah. So I think that this turn from Calcano is just like, like a, 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 an incredible like study incredible in like decision making and cool under pressure. Cool under pressure. <laughs> like you, you have to sequence this right. You this right. you don't want to lose extra life to your ring. You need to draw your cards. You need to do your stuff and not die to what's happening on the other side of the board. And just like prioritizing what to do with the very limited amount of mana that you have, and then what what he ultimately does to make his land drop, and then uh like get the haywire might down and and kill the ring is you know just just really good prioritization and not letting like oh man I've missed a land in like seven looks like really get to him. Yeah, no, I I think I think Calcano played this game and the entire match out of his mind yeah i i cannot say enough about how well i think christian calcano played this match of magic so stirrings finally hits that land mm -hmm.
Yeah, it is funny how it just like there are so many turns with scam that's just like, yeah, I mean, I here are my cards. Like I did I did my thing and I'm just yeah. hoping you don't draw out of it here. <laughs> and and I think that I think that there are that 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 style of play is great for some people, I think myself included, and I imagine would drive some other that that other people that might just drive them insane. Yeah. I don't like I can I have played decks where that's the thing. I can do it. I really prefer to be on the like pass the turn with this force of negation in hand as I like have my threats laid out sort of part of the, you know, way of approaching the game. I I really the I think part of it is that my favorite part of magic is combat. Mm-hmm. And so I I want to like I I think one of the reasons I really like scam is you reduce the game to just what's on the battlefield. Yeah, that's true. And then then it's all combat, baby. <laughs> use use a feign death to get a favorable trade and yep. Yep. <laughs> A card that I I have graduated to not forgetting that it exists outside of like getting you know like actually thinking about it during combat steps against my scam opponents. So you know I feel good about that sometimes. Yeah. And this is where I I maybe would have been able to pull off. Calcano's other plays this is the point where I would have lost the game is that I just would not have Haywire mited my ring here I would not have figured that out I think I would have lost by taking a land and not the chromatic sphere that's true yeah for sure that I, I think I would take the land here and be like alright I just need to blow up the world and then we'll figure it out later yeah exactly and I'm, I'm- I'm sure I would have done the same thing. It's just like take the land and then take damage and then eventually die to my ring. And, uh, but this like realizing the, well, no, it, it, I think that it's actually an even cleaner punish because I think this is the turn I draw the lightning bolt. Oh, sure. (laughs) Right. You, you just take seven and I draw the bolt and it's a, right. Then it's the lightning helix moment. Yeah. And which would have been amazing. And then, you know what? I would have left that game being like, eh, there was nothing I could have done. I, you know, I just like tried, I was just getting my lens. Like, I wouldn't even have realized. And this it. isn't the turn I, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the turn I draw the lightning bolt, actually. Um, or is it? Or is that, oh, a, that, fear? Was a, fear. Maybe that was a fear? All right. But, I'm just crazy then. But he would have eventually lost this game to his ring. There's just like no no way around that if he takes seven damage here and still has a ring in play. And just prioritizing like, yeah, I need to make my land, but most importantly, I need to also kill my ring this turn and no other combination. Mm-hmm. Which is like, man, because he's down. You, you're you're you've got two games. Like he has to win this game, and to to take yeah. that line is is so. I don't know. Respect. Yeah, no, he is. I, like I said, I cannot say enough good things about how good of a magic player he is. Sorry, I know this is, you know, not, not the purpose of this stream to just like. No, no, I, no, I, I want, I want, I, I think it's really important to, to stress how well he played this game. Yeah. It's like, I, I mean, Sure, I won the I, I won the tournament, but I I I certainly did not play as well in this match as he did. This also wasn't your 39th Pro Tour, so you know. It's... <laughs> I'd say uh, I'd say I'll get there eventually, but I'm not confident they won't change OP four more times at that point. <laughs> Well, you're getting at least a year's worth of Pro Tours, at least. Yeah. The kind of fucked up thing is that this Oblivion Stone also takes your treasures. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Uh, I appreciate the foreshadowing. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just, you know, like, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is, like, part of the mana base of this deck and, like, contributes to when you do just have to cast a Fury and... And and part of my problem was, and and where I make the mistake with not not cracking the treasure to pay, is I was so excited that he didn't main phase it, which meant I got a free thought seize off of the reflection. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think so he, you know, that that's a big consideration of like what to play around there for him and and like when to mm. And he did it perfectly, right? If he does it, if he main phases it, mm -hmm. I still get to feign death. There's no window for the Tormod script to screw it up. Yep. And then I draw the lightning bolt this turn, and then he takes four from a grief, and then I bolt him, and right. that's it. Yeah, so he had to choose He's... between taking a grief, a four damage grief attack, or getting thought seized, and I think very correctly, like... Yeah, yeah. And and the Tormod script on himself also oh um, my God. a phenomenal play. Yes. Honestly, when I was watching, I didn't even realize it had happened until, like, it became relevant later on. And and here is my I did it and then I th this is the worst part. I thought to myself I need to crack the treasure to pay for this, and then I tap my land to pay for it. And then I realized immediately after doing it, no, I was supposed to crack my treasure. What am I doing? Yeah, and we are and then... in combat, <laughs> so you can't. Yeah. 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 Very frustrating. It's... Yeah, and that that shake in my head there was the, God, I'm so dumb, um, but. And here I'm thinking, okay, I want to. I need to figure out how to push these last few damage, especially because I have this lightning bolt in my hand. Mm -hmm. I have this uncracked fetch, so even if he plays the Titan, I still have access to a red source. So the Titan isn't necessarily the biggest concern, especially because if he just plays Titan. Uh, then I'll get to hit him with the grief. Right. So I ultimately decide to just take the things that will stop me from getting to hit him with the grief, which I think I think that makes sense, right? I'm I'm in if I can hit you with this grief, I get there mode. Yes. And then I do then and that that's the worst part. I even think to myself, no, I need to crack my treasure this time. I screwed it up the first time. And then I tap my land. <laughs> It's it, it's like my my body's just on like is just trying to autopilot it and says tap your lands to pay for your spell. Well, yeah, and I mean right. I I I that's one of the things that I struggle with the most is adjusting from these like burnt in heuristics. Like use your lands to pay for stuff before your treasures, and then the one percent of the time that it's like no, use your treasure to pay for your stuff, even though all of your lands are untapped. It is very difficult to adjust your like just make your hands grab the right permanent to do the thing with i and i think that's that's a thing that like once you start getting there is is a big level up when you you can like your brain starts recognizing those like don't follow the heuristic here moments a little more quickly and you, and you get there a little faster mm -hmm. Ryan, crypting himself is relevant because every artifact that he has exiled from his graveyard is now something that he can grab with karn Which uh, he immediately gets into his hand this turn, <laughs> and you just I have was to hoping watch it. it was just going to be a Sundering Titan. <laughs> yes, we, we we had plans for that. The Sundering Titan is fine. And the problem is the Karn, the Great Creator, gets better. The better your opponent is. Yeah. And, um... I don't know if you guys are familiar with this Christian Calcano guy. Right. But he's, he's pretty good at magic. He's putting it together. Like... 
you know, I, you know, most people could probably figure out I need to get ensnaring bridge here, but just yeah, the 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 small lines, the little bits of equity add up, and you know, Karn yeah. effectively has like twelve activated abilities. So the the better you are, the more likely you are to pick the right one. Here I'm trying to think about, okay, the the obvious thing, is, the obvious way for me to win the game is I can lightning bolt you twice if I can draw another lightning bolt. What else can I do or draw that can maybe get me out of this as well? Because now I know there's a Sundering Titan coming down. Mm -hmm. I want to see what, what else, if I leave the card in play... I probably lose, but I want to double check what options are face up just so I don't miss anything, given that I've already missed a bunch of things this game. And ultimately, I'm like, okay, I, I have to get this card off the table because you you can never leave a card on the table and it actually go well for you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and, and you can see me trying to like run through. Is there a world where I win the game if I don't? And the answer is probably not. So I just burned the fable that I that I, I should have played the previous turn had I done it right. Mm -hmm. Um. So things, it, it, hindsight being twenty twenty, things can get really weird. But yeah, kind of impossible to back up from that point and like figure out what would have happened. Like you no. wouldn't have been able to attack with the goblin here. So you know that, exactly. that certainly isn't part of the equation. It just would have been. Like, we're digging deeper into our deck, which, who knows? Yeah, it, it, we're digging deeper into our deck, and we're maybe trying to set up, like, a grief lock mm -hmm. with the fable. And, because that is that is part of me, myself, and, and I worked with Liam Kane on the deck a lot. And our, part of our plan against Tron was, fable gives you corner case outs that you might not have with something like a grief lock. Yeah, which especially becomes relevant against, like, exactly ensnaring bridge-based boards. Yeah. <sighs> and then just, like, and, continues to yeah. play Karn Great Creators. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that was the worst thing you could have drawn for me. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, please don't grab Haywire Might. Because Haywire might lets him go to seven and may, means Bolt is not no longer an out. Right. And I mean, the upside of the ensnaring bridge being in play is that, you know, like Worm Coil Engine, which is often just like the 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 cleanup crew against Rakdos like doesn't really do it here so he's got to get a little more creative with stuff and the interesting thing is we don't actually think he had a a worm coil in his sideboard mm. he might have boarded one out so that he had more cop effective copies of it but I think he was on two in the main none in the board right that's that's true. Then pretty interestingly, pretty interesting. goes for Walking Ballista here. I mean, I, I you know, it, it's a card that is relevant. It's removal spells against your stuff that you could put into play. Hello, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I am also a wife guy, so just in case. Hell yeah. <laughs> in case anybody wasn't aware of that. And so, this is the turn I drew the Kroxa. And I'm thinking, I can play the Kroxa now, and the Titan's gone, but 
it probably isn't getting better for me from there. I'm thinking I have the burn in my hand. He has a bridge in place, so he's incentivized to empty his hand. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just supposed to hold this and try to burn him out. Yeah, and I, I think that, like, if that's my plan, and I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking it's very likely he ends up with an empty hand at some point, and, like... Sundering Titan just kills two Sundering of my Titan lands. It, it doesn't attack. Like, the the game is going to last yeah, and, a while. And that's, and that's part of why I kept my fetch lands uncracked. I didn't want to give him the ability to destroy more red sources. Mm. We can only have the four blood crypts as ones that I can fetch. Sure. And same thing. I didn't want to give away that I had the lightning bolt, so I just was like, my life total doesn't matter. I'm just going to wait and and see what he does as far as maybe he empties his hand and I can just set it up to burn him out yep. cleanly or we'll go from there. So it is really kind of just a not necessarily a twist of fate, but just an unfortunate, like, bit of math. Just how the numbers worked out as we, we crack for this map. We crack this map to get tower, which leaves exactly four mana. And, you know, I don't know exactly what Calcano was thinking here, but it just, you know, spending four mana on this walking ballista and you can crack the sphere later is fine. And, and my thinking is it probably isn't a chromatic sphere or a chromatic star. Because general thinking is, and obviously he played better than general thinking, mm -hmm. but general thought process is, right, you play the star first, you draw your card, you try and see what other, op you, you give yourself the most options before you do anything else. Yeah. And, and so I obviously incorrectly read him as not having a star or a sphere. And I'm feeling good when he asks, do when when he asks, can I plus on nothing? Mm. Because my big fear here is, is oh he takes down the the card, grabs something, and just holds it. Mm -hmm. Um, when he asks that, I'm 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 trying not to give anything away, but I'm certainly thinking that's great news. Play the one ring. Yeah. Because Croxa circumvents it, I can respond with the lightning bolt, and, and then... then we're gambling on the top of the deck. Obviously, I would prefer he just, like, had a land or something. And I did think at one point it might be a Boseju, because that's not really a land you're going to want to play, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, and, and other than the Ballista, there, you would probably find something to use your mana on. Yeah. Unlikely that it's a Tron piece there because he probably wouldn't have then cracked his yeah, map. Yeah, exactly. Tower, but yeah. It, it, it could be a, a boss issue. Oops. And my thinking is I think his his last card is a boss issue. I'm going to go for it now. It's probably not getting better. Yeah. I mean, there's no. I think I am supposed to fetch. On, I think I'm supposed to fetch on his end step. Um, because just giving me one more look at the actual clean kill of Lightning Bolt. Sure. I think that not croak saying here is spewing, right? Because like, yeah, you're. You're counting on Calcano then going to his turn and not thinking about the existence of Kroxa as a possibility in your main deck and not thinking about the possibility of you top decking Lightning Bolt and just like doing anything he can to gain two life here. So yeah. 
there's just like no way that he passes the turn again at two life and Ed Kroxa is more likely to kill him. And and I have the Bowmasters, but and that I can theoretically use to live through Haywire Might on the bridge, mm -hmm. but it it doesn't uh it it's not a winning line. Sure. And so we jammed and we and and he had it. Yep. And Put Crooks on the comes... stack. Like, does this make me a pro tour champion? Not yet. Just <laughs> not not quite yet. <laughs> and here's the haywire might for the bridge and Christian Calcano continues to show why he's one of the best to ever play the game. Yeah, very well played. A, a, a game that I think very few people could have beaten you with the way that the cards played out. Um, but it's, it's Calc. Yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah I mean... <laughs> We're just laughing about how what a what a what a crazy game it was. Definitely my favorite game of the entire Pro Tour. I, I think that's you know, I not exactly a hot take or anything like that. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, mine probably ranked game five of the finals, game two of the finals, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> from an from, from an entertainment standpoint, game four makes a lot of sense. As a, a connoisseur of the game, you know. <laughs> I think that uh, and, any game besides game five of the finals game being your favorite final. is like a little goofy, probably. Yeah, yeah. And and what was funny was right there there were a lot of people talking about game two with the with the turn three log, but that didn't feel all that exciting because that was sort of the plan from the start. Yeah, it, I mean you know it's a big flashy fun play. Yeah. Here he doesn't have green, so I'm not too worried about stirrings, and. If he there, but there is a very real chance he can just draw an Urza's mine. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I'm sorry. jamming my no, space bar there. <laughs> um, there's a very real chance he can draw an Urza's mine, and then just if I don't, if I try to take the things that can get him Tron, I I can just he draws the mine, plays the um, uh plays the worm coil and I'm and I'm and I'm done. Yeah. So my thinking is just take the payoffs and make the top make the top of the deck give him both Tron and a payoff. I, I think that makes a ton of sense, yeah. Especially because like right, he doesn't even have the green mana for the stirrings, so and he plays Relic and I feel good that it was not an expedition map. Yes. <laughs> Getting core crux in asks getting a grief scam on game five of the pro tour finals. How does it feel? Uh, good. Uh, as Dom has talked about with his last Swiss match, you know, you love to play good games of magic. Sometimes you just want it to like not be that hard every once in a while. <laughs> there's there's spots where you kind yeah, of... and, and it's... <laughs> especially after game four being the way it was, mm -hmm. I was not complaining about uh about just kind of having it all. scam into blood moon and i think cal kind of just looking at you know the cards in his hand it's pretty clear that 
he's not going to be able to get there this game. So he, my, my, my thinking here now is, cause I think I draw, this is where I draw like, oh, I draw the, the, another grief to just try and strip something, hoping to hit a ring yeah. to make sure that, that he doesn't get to buy himself a turn with that. And I see the double Karn and sort of think about it and I can take the stirrings or the scrying and the way that the, the way if I if I leave him with both of them and he draws forest he can potentially stirrings into oblivion stone or the worst case is another tron piece or the, the final tron piece same with sylvan scrying for the final tron piece mm -hmm. really what i'm afraid of is him drawing a land here so that he can play the karn tick down grab uh, a bridge or some sort of uh answer to the 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 grief and and stabilize that way but uh, uh, my my other thought my other thought is if he doesn't draw it I can maybe draw another thought seize and take the other Karn sure and it doesn't end up mattering because I am a very very lucky magic player <laughs> well and I mean you know in those spots you have to think about how what are the corner cases that lead me to actually losing and it's you know these you're trying to beat the the unlikely thing that could actually beat you most draw steps do not beat you there he didn't hit any of the draw mm -hmm. steps that even gave him a shot which is was the most likely outcome from that point he had about 40 something cards in his deck that just do nothing there yeah and here is my team they were fantastic for prep and support, and I cannot express how much I appreciate them and my girlfriend and Calc for being a fantastic opponent multiple times over the course of the weekend. Yeah, so, I mean, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. This was a fun pro tour to watch. I, I don't know how, how much you've gotten to go back and, and like watch the VODs and stuff, but there's... You know, the the density of games that they put on keeps, like, getting better. The presentation is nice. But also, like, the I, I, I am not always the biggest modern fan, but the games just were good. There were just a ton of really good games, and, and this was a, this Pro Tour was just a joy to watch, honestly. I, I got to go back. I've, I went back and, and uh, watched the top eight. I haven't... I didn't end up on camera very much, so the only one that I haven't really gone back and watched is my top, is my winning in in round fifteen. Mm -hmm. And even then, I think they only broadcast game three. Yeah. But uh, yes, it was really cool to see uh, Kai Buddha. Um, what are my thoughts on modern now after the pro tour? Um, I I think that. I think that scam probably gets a little worse. I would probably, I, I would expect to see an uptick in burn and hammer because they're good against Tron and scam. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it. I think really, especially for like, if we're talking the RCQ level, it's just going to be modern. You're just, people are just going to play what they like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's pretty true is, is, Predicting your RCQ metagame is borderline impossible, so play a good deck that you know how to play well. I I will say I am not like like I keep getting tricked into being like burn is probably going to be pretty good, but I, the the amount of times that I've like talked this over with people and I think that I am now firmly in the Bob and Cheese camp of just like burn can have just like all good matchups and just still be a bad deck like i you know you look at it and like mathematically and logically you're like yeah burn seems yeah, fine burn. here and then it just like has a 47 percent win rate or whatever and like ever. i don't know it's just not ever good enough anymore i also am a recovered burn guy yeah <laughs> so so i still have the like nah Nah, it's good this time. It's it's the it's the dom. Surely, it's definitely surely good this time. time. <laughs> and I also like I I worked with 
um, Quinn Tenole Quiniac on Moto. Mm-hmm. So I also had uh, had him being like, nah, I'm just going to register burn. And I'm like, well, if you're going to register burn, maybe I should register burn. Man, glad we did. I, I'm very happy that we didn't end up in that alternate yeah, universe where no. you registered burn in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, yeah, no, I, I ended up playing t- against too much living end. That matchup's so bad. I would much rather be scam in that matchup. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely like a. I'm trying to think of like what else we should do. It's 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 kind of a letdown to go and just like play some league matches with scam from here or whatever so i'm down to just chat for a little bit longer see if like chat has any more questions or anything like that um works great for me you know what do you think and what are your sort of plans for you know you are now at least at a minimum for the next year so you are now like a you know professional magic player qualified for a bunch of pro tours uh i know that you are gonna be at dallas because i i or not Dallas, but uh, Atlanta. I heard on the Bolt Zone that you had already made plans, so you're going to end up there, even though kind of unnecessary to play in that regionals. So I will, I will be there as well. So I'll see you there. Um, how but, are you, how are you approaching, or are, what what are your thoughts going forward about like I I now have a bunch of pro tours to play. Like, what's your what's your plan for that going forward? Um, so I'm working with Sanctum of All again for Worlds. With uh, Kane and and Rainbow Chat and and like uh, some of the same people that I worked with for this, so so that I'm really looking forward to. Um, at least for Worlds, it's gonna be a lot of trying to juggle my time because I am uh, I am still a graduate student. My semester starts in two weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm in I'm in my last semester. I'm I'm finishing up my my masters and then and then calling it a calling it for school i've i've had enough at this point i understand but i'm <laughs> yeah. but but i've got like so i'm going to try be trying to struggle with graduating and i'm teaching this semester and playing worlds that that's going to be my my goal is is get as much out of the way like sort of fit as much worlds prep as i can in for the first 3 weeks of the semester and then just deal with school for the next for like the three months after that or whatever. Sure. Um, it's kind of nice that Atlanta's off my back a little bit. Um, because it, uh, I, I, I'm not going to have tons of time to prep for it before the event. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably just going to like do what I can to help my friends prep as best I can. And then probably just register whatever the best deck in red and black are. (laughs) Um, well, it's pioneer. So, you know, there will be yeah, a unfor- one. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't justify registering Fane Death again, but... That's a tough one with no um, creatures, yeah. I have tried very hard to... Uh, re- I, I have spent way too much time with the cards Voldaren Thrillseeker and Phyrexian Flesh Gorger oh in God. an attempt to still play Fane Death. <laughs> It's not good. Don't don't try it, please. Save your save your precious MTGO tickets. We uh, there's like, and I don't think I I think the VOD is gone now. There's a moment on stream when we're playing against Gruel, as my opponent makes an attack that's just like a real head scratcher. Like, how could this attack possibly be? like like what's going on here? And then we all start like multiple people in my chat and I start like shouting out like what what could this mean is it ember cleave is no 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 they they presented jigampa and then we go through a bunch of other cards that don't make a lot of sense then somebody's like is it a sweeper is it is it sweltering suns and then we think about that for another minute and 30 seconds and we realize like no they they presented jigampa it's just exiled right now they can't have that either and then we finally find out as we just like make the blocks and then they pose you my ley line binding that voldar and thrill seeker was under and caused like like utter chaos of a combat step on this board oh no <laughs> the sicko in me was hoping it was just going to be blood rush gore clan rampager i have lost to that recently in pioneer so you know it's not out of the question 
uh, the um, but I am a Voldar and Thrillseeker fan, so you know if you make that shit work, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> um, but as far as that goes, it'll um, as far as past like worlds and then Atlanta, I, I haven't, I haven't really thought too much about it. I'm sort of gonna sound like a broken record. I'm just trying to take it one tournament at a time, I guess. I I mean, what else? can you do i and and you are in this like category of players who like found out at the last possible period yep. of time that like you're going to world and and with this being your first pro tour you didn't even have like an adjusted match point sweat or anything like that you weren't even thinking about it you needed to spike this one to even have it be a thought and so now you're just kind of hit with like okay time to start prepping for worlds yeah yeah i got i i remember getting the email that's like Hey, people in people who are qualified for pro tours, here's how adjusted match points work. And I remember sort of scrolling through, seeing 39 and being like, yeah, I don't need to care about no, this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> if I if I have enough to get there, it's because I spiked the hell out of this pro tour. So I didn't even, that wasn't even a thought that crossed. It was just genuinely, oh, that would be cool to play in worlds, but yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> that's that's a it, far future concern. Yeah, and and that was that like I tried telling I don't remember someone someone was like oh it's got to be like a dream come true and I'm like not not really because I never even like that never even entered my mind it, like making the dream come true was going ten and six to requalify. Sure. Yeah. No. That's that's what you're really I, hoping for the first PT, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean here I am I guess so. Um, Did it. And but, so during the tournament itself, like once you like hit that 10 wins, so the rest of it and, you know, obviously taking one match at a time or whatever, but did the rest of the tournament kind of feel like a free roll after that? Or or were you just, was it starting to become like a, like, you know, I got to keep winning. Um, it, it was, it mostly felt like a free roll. I, I hit, I made day two at seven and one. And then I remember thinking it'll kind of sting if I don't requal yeah of course and then i won to the draft and i'm like well i got the one win out of it so i just got to go two and three in modern and i think i can do that mm -hmm. um i have certainly two three my fair share of modern leagues so um <laughs> I, I and so i was like a couple of them but yes yeah yeah <laughs> um and so i'm like all right i i can get i can get a couple and then I win the first two rounds of modern and I'm like, okay, I'm requalified. It's, it's all just gravy. Now I'm just going to keep trying to play and, and enjoy it from there. And then I get paired against Gab Nassif, who I like my dad, I, I, I subscribe to his channel. My dad subscribed. Like we're, we're, my whole house is just a bunch of yellow hot nerds. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm super excited. Cause like we had, we had met in person earlier um, and, and so it was, it was cool to just get to play against Gab. even asked me cause they interviewed me at the players party on Thursday, like with a few other people who it was their first pro tour. Mm -hmm. And, um, they asked, well, if there's someone that you would want to play on the weekend, who would it be? And I'm like, well, I guess Gab Nassif cause I hang out in his Twitch chat a lot and I know he's a really, really good player. And I think that would be a lot of fun. And so actually get paired against him and and so we're we're like oh of course of course we would inevitably get paired yeah and then i 2-0 him and i'm thinking oh wow i'm i'm close i wonder if like top eight is a thing and then one of my teammates is like you probably have a win in next round <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh shit okay all right well let's i'll do what i can and then I won, and I, I, there's the, there's the video of me tackling Claire because I, I'm thinking, oh my god, I just top eight at the pro tour, and then we check standings, and there is a chance that I get pared down, and can't draw, mm. and so then I'm like, oh god, I got my hopes up, and now I'm gonna lose, and I'm gonna miss, and, and then I'm like, no, shut up, brain, I just need to play a match of magic, and hope I, can, hope I can draw or play a match of magic. And I get lucky in part because the other two players with 12 wins, Marco and Simon, I haven't played against either of them. Mm. And so I, I get paired against Simon, we intentionally draw, and then I, I realize I've just made the top eight of the Pro Tour. Yeah, not quite as harrowing a tale of making top eight as 
Dom had to go through, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was insane. Was, he like, was a, um hit the zero outer to to make it. Yeah, there. yeah, he was explaining to me what happened because I didn't realize I I drew and then like went outside to call my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, he was explaining it to me while we were, like, waiting for the top eight announcement, and I'm just like, holy shit, that's insane, because it is. Yeah, we were watching the, because on, on coverage, they just had the Hain kosaka match up, and it took mm -hmm. so long that, you know, they never got to show Dom's, you know, round 16 match, and I was waiting, yeah. I wasn't checking standings because I didn't want to spoil myself. Like, I wanted to watch Dom's match if they were going to put it on. And then it became more and more obvious that, like, oh, this match is just going to take forever. And then we sat there for, like, five minutes as Hane and Kosaka are trying to get the other one to scoop. Which is mm -hmm. mm, perhaps not the most responsible uh, production decision of all time. Sure. Uh, but I didn't know any of the, like, stakes here. I had no idea... Because I wasn't looking at the standings, I didn't know that like we needed an unintentional draw from this match to put Dom in the top eight. And if I did know that, then yeah, I would have been not. really like, oh, "Oh my god!" Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Loka asks thoughts on the four color deck with Karn the Great Creator to have a better Tron matchup. I have never played four color in my life, nor do I really intend to. So, Chris, I think you've played it at least a couple times. I'm gonna just let you. Uh... Uh, yeah, I can't support this this deck building decision. There's just no way that this is like a a reasonable thing to do. I don't think you can put Karn into your four color deck and like maintain. Like you're just gonna draw Karn as a four mana spell without having the additional mana that lets you leverage Karn like way too often and I don't think it ends up working out very well like Makes sense. it's probably a card that is fine against Tron and then like a liability in a ton of matchups mm -hmm. um yeah I, I'm interested to see where Modern goes from here but since the but... only thing it's really relevant for is RCQs then I would say keep playing the deck that you're good at playing. And if that's Hammer, great. If it's Rhinos, great. And you can win an RCQ with like any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, uh, Matt Como was uh, uh, re uh, reminded me of the fact that the, the RCQ that ultimately got me to the Pro Tour, uh, I won playing Urza Affinity with four Aether Sworn Sphinx. So... It doesn't matter what you play. <laughs> Excuse me? You, you won with... <laughs> tell, me, tell, tell me more about this deck. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so it was, a, it was an aspiring Spike Brew. Okay. It's like Esper Sentinel, Urza, Thought Monitor, Cranial Plating, um, Nettle Cyst, and Aether for Aether Sworn Sphinx. Which is I'll, I'll just let you pull it up, uh, but just, it's just uh, pull in this this nine mana affinity for artifacts flying cascade. <laughs> Not the, so the, the origin two card that has had the most significant impact, I guess. The the origin of the uh, of the Ether Swarm Sphinx is Matt messages me before an F and M is like, hey, do you have these cards can you can you build this deck can can i borrow it because i'm usually the one that lends out cards for like our group that would go to rcqs mm -hmm. and i'm like i have most of it other than urza's why in god's name are you doing this to yourself good question and he's like nah it's good i swear i four one to league i'm playing it tomorrow <laughs> and i'm like uh, if you can find urza's i'll lend you the rest of it but your deck is terrible and he he's like he he messaged me back. He's like, I found Urza's. Can you bring the stuff so I can play it at F and M? I'm like, yeah, sure. Your deck's terrible. <laughs> and as F and M goes on, I just keep your deck's terrible. What's your record? Two and zero. Your deck's terrible. What's your record? Three and zero. Your deck is terrible. How do you do? Four and zero. Sure, your deck's still terrible. Playing Ether Sworn Sphinx is not a good uh, is is not a good idea. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it tomorrow. 
we get paired. So so we're we we end up playing the RCQ the next day. At, it's at Star City, and I don't know why I thought I had any authority to tell him his deck was terrible when I was like, yeah, I'm definitely playing Merfolk tomorrow. <laughs> But so we get paired round one and he, I think, it, I think the match was close, but like he ends up beating me and he's like, if I do well in this RCQ, you have to register the deck on Sunday. Sure. Cause there's another RCQ the next day. And I'm like, sure. Why not? Okay. He ends up making the semifinals and loses to Todd Anderson playing for the invite. Hmm. And he's like, you got to do it now. And I'm like, fine. So I go and I buy a play set of Russian Urzas Ooh. so that I can play this deck at the RCQ the next day. That's um, about 40 minutes down there, actually in Blacksburg, where I go to school. Okay. And he writes on the Ether Sworn Sphinxes, RCQ top four competitor. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah. And gotta keep track of that. And, and so I'm like, fine, I'm playing this deck, and it's a nine-person RCQ that I end up winning with the deck. <laughs> and and so now, of course, like, there's the there's the Ether Sworn Sphinx bit, and winning that RCQ is what cued me for San Diego, then I top 32 would which is ultimately what cued me for Barcelona, because yeah. I had to defer my invite. And then I do well in Barcelona, so he made me... Uh, uh, I, I know I tweeted about it, but I guess I can just... I'll just grab it. He made me a little... Uh, I don't know how well I can get it to show up, but... Oh, a little shadow box that? Yeah, here. Yeah, Yeah, with, with Sphinx and then Archfiend, because I, uh, I played Archfiend. I was really high on Archfiend in Standard Rakdos and then Pioneer Rakdos. Mm-hmm. And I kept trying to like make jokes about how I'm gonna play an Archfiend in the sideboard of uh of Scam for the grindy matchups. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and so yeah, it, it love love Matt, love at Bo Matt Courier. Give him a follow on Twitter because that's what he does with his time, just the same as that's what I do with mine. Yeah, Matt Matt is a friend of mine too. Definitely a, a good dude for sure. Um, but yeah, so that is the that is the origin of the Ether Sworn Sphinx bit. <laughs> well, you know, you got to win your nine man RCQ with with something. So it might as well be Urza's and Ether Sworn Sphinxes. I that's sick though. And really, actually, what happened was my opponent in the finals forgot what Ashiok Dream Render did. Okay. <laughs> And and like fetched into it or something. Uh, fetched into it, and that cut him off of activating his Urza Saga on two, and so then he lost the Urza Saga the next turn, and then couldn't and go couldn't get anything either. The, okay, well, I mean, these are the things that happen at nine man RCQs. Like that is correct. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, it's it's a it's a good little start to what appears to have been a much longer story than I thought it would be. <laughs> There's a lot of like nooks and crannies that need to get explored in the story that starts with like what is the text of Ether Swan Sphinx? And you know oh, Exactly. Now we've fully explored all of that. There's also the there's also my the the Archfiend of the Dross uh Psyop as my friends referred to it. Yes. That's <laughs> I you know I was there at at the the RC where like that was happening and I couldn't quite put together like how much of it was a psyop and how much of it was people like actually really into Archfiend of the Tross just as a magic card in Rakdos decks because there was clearly a little bit of both. I I was the latter. Okay. I I fully and I fully stand by that. Yeah. I think that. That yeah. me and Matt's build of Rakdos with one Archfiend in the main and two more in the board was favored against both Mono Green and the Mirror. Legit. Yeah. As as long as they don't have uh what's it called? Uh Heartless Act. Heartless Act? No. Heartless Act isn't real. It can't hurt you. <laughs> uh just once in my life. 
I mean, I'm not going to actually register Heartless Act ever, so I'm not going to, like, set myself up for the ability to Heartless Act somebody's Archfiend, but, you know, it I I do want it to happen. The other problem is, it like, one of the conclusions that me and Matt came to is it's actually just probably the best of the two mana answers you could play in Rakdos. <laughs> that, that makes because, it risky if other people start figuring that out or just agreeing with you. Because, like... Power Word Kill can't kill any of the angels and then has, like, uh, the Mayhem Devil blind spot. And Go for the Throat couldn't kill vehicles, which was obviously a huge problem with Gruul and Grease Fang. And then Heartless Act's big blind spot is humans. And I would rather, like, give up a little bit of a percent, a, a little bit of percentage in a matchup that's already pretty good mm -hmm. than, like, not be able to kill vehicles that you have a problem with otherwise or Mayhem Devil that you have a problem with otherwise. It is wild, though, the wild, gap bro. in in Pioneer. Yeah. And now we're getting less into, like, this is good stuff to talk about. And this is, like, pure podcast-type discussion is that, like, it is wild that in Pioneer, wild. you have all of these two-mana removal spell options, and they all have, like, gigantic holes, like, that will cost you a match at some point in the tournament, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, we, we never got a Terminate reprint in a standard set over the past 10 years, and that's just... Please! <laughs> Mostly, uh, honestly, I think mostly because it says the word yeah. regenerate on it, and they're just not going to put that into a standard set, so they're going to give us weird things instead. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, we, we have to wait for a red-black instant target creature loses indestructible this turn, then destroy it. Ooh. That's a, that's a good spell. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> um... Kung Fu Quinn, uh, question for Jake. Do you think the Swamp Cycler from the Lord of the Rings set has a place in Scam, even if in small numbers? I don't think so. Um, it's going to be a bad top deck a lot of the time. I don't really want to cut even more lands from Scam than I already have. I, like, I think that 20 is pretty low in general, and I don't want to go lower than that to put a 6-drop in my deck. And plus, I think, like, Adding persists to the deck is a little bit meh. like persisting your grief into being a two one makes the clock essentially meaningless. Yeah. So you're yeah. not you're not getting the other half of the important scam part. And I think there are also like enough good answers to like troll or Olafont or something that that persisting that isn't necessarily gonna go the distance either. Yeah, I I that all makes sense to me. Thoughts on That's Grixis? That's on Archfiend. Like it. Um, I think it's a deck that you can play. A friend of mine has worked a fair amount on it. And I I mean, I would probably still play Rakdos with some number of Archfiend before I tried to play the combo. But I also just think, like, the mana's a little bit awkward. I haven't, like... I haven't found a way that uh, a way to build a mana that I'm really happy playing Dig Through Time. Mm -hmm. I actually, when I was playing the deck, I played some number of Demonic Bargain, the like exile the top thirteen, then Demonic Tutor. Okay. To and I found that I like deck. that. Yeah. Well, I, I like that a little bit better because it let you be almost entirely Rakdos, so mm -hmm. it made the mana way way better. Yeah, I. I um, it also. I, I agree completely. Just like playing some of multiple different versions of it is so, like dig through time just renders your mana base like completely untenable. Like you can't put a double blue card into what is mostly a Rakdos deck in Pioneer. It also um it also curves nicely because you can play Archfiend uh you can play Archfiend and say go on four, and then on five you can bargain mm. for alteration and cast alteration. That's really cute. I you know, I'm not opposed to that. It definitely needs to do something different from any of the lists that I've seen, which ha have not gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. Um and then another very small advantage, it's actually on arena. So if you're <laughs> if you're a primarily arena player, you can still play it. Pioneer Masters 2024, eventually. A quarter shield, a quarter shield. Oh my god. Perhaps the most tilting card preview of all time. I don't know. I think it was the fun. I'm with Patrick Sullivan on this. That's hilarious. It is very funny. Yes, absolutely. But but I, I also am in I also am in 
the very unique and privileged spot where I can do the vast majority of my testing just in paper. Mm -hmm. I am very lucky that I've been playing for a very long time, so I have a lot of these cards that I've just kind of accumulated as time went on, so I haven't had to, like, go buy, like, a whole deck at once almost ever, which obviously I'm very, very privileged to be in that spot, and I'm very lucky that I have a lot of other people around me, right? I live in Roanoke, Virginia, where where Star City is, so I'm going to have a pretty decent crew of other Magic players that I can do a lot of my testing and paper with, so I don't need to worry about Masters sets or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, that that's super helpful, and right, just having the people around is, like, a huge deal, and uh, that that is really nice. I, I kind of just want it on Arena, not even for, like, actual testing purposes, but just because, like, you know, flashing lights make good brain chemicals, and so I can get my, like, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm watching TV and I'm playing a little bit of Pioneer. It's not, like, really helping me get practice for the RC or whatever, but it's at least, like, putting some play patterns into my, my like, muscle memory or whatever. But for sure. But nothing too serious. Well, Jake, I, I really, really appreciate you really hanging fun. out. I This was super cool, and hopefully you know, you top eight another pro tour and we get to do it again. But also I I'm super down to do other, other content and stuff with you. So, uh, you know, if we, yeah, want to absolutely. Do a... I, I, I would love to, this has been a lot of fun for me. I, I love getting any excuse to, to talk about magic and be subtly narcissistic for a few hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly the let's review the matches where you won a pro tour is there, there's a certain, <laughs> you know, draw to that um but in, yeah in in particular one thing that i am trying to set up and do more of is get deck specialists to come on and kind of like you know coach me or two-headed giant you know co-op play through some yeah. leagues and just kind of get that level of you know i can queue up a league with Rakdos and like kind of play it and then think about like maybe a sideboard like this but getting somebody in who not only knows what you should do but also like i can then ask questions as an idiot with the deck who who like has to ask the obvious questions i think can can make some like pretty fun and interesting content that will help you know introduce people to decks that they don't know how to play yet so i would love to get you on for a Rakdos stream at some point and i, I think that would be really cool I'm, I'm sure we can i'm sure we can work that out i'm like it'll It'll get trickier as time as as the semester starts, but I I'm sure that we'll you and I can figure something out because I would absolutely love to come on again. Awesome, awesome, sounds really good. I mean, yeah, maybe sooner rather than later or something. To, but um, yeah, let let's keep in touch and definitely make that happen. Um, chat, thank chat. you all so much for hanging out. Appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I will take this VOD and put it on to YouTube just so that it has a place to live. And so if you need to like point anybody to it for any reason, like it, it will be there. Uh, not a thing that I thought of until Dom was like, you should do this. And I was like, oh yeah, I should probably do this. Um, but yeah, any, any other thoughts, anything else you want to touch on before we head out? Uh, thank you again. Thank my team again. Thank Claire again. Cause Got a got a wife guide up, right? Of course. At all times. At all times. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go ahead. I should raid somebody, but I'm probably just going to end the stream. And, no. Um, yeah, I will be back. We'll, we'll record the podcast tomorrow, so I'll probably be back on for that oh, for okay. anybody who wants to catch that. And then I will be streaming this weekend as well. Uh, Jake, where can people find you? Mostly Twitter, uh, I, guess. I have. Yeah, it's it's basically just Twitter. Um, my Twitter is at Make Memes Not War. You can probably also find me by searching my name now because I uh find I finally had a reason to actually attach my real name to my online presence. How many so, uh, followers did you pick up after winning a pro tour? I went from about 150 to about 2150. <laughs> it's a good job. My phone was unusable for like two and a half, three days. I've been tweeting too much lately, and 
uh i now i i need to do something about my twitter notifications it's not even like anything is like super blowing up i just have been tweeting too much and just like replies from tweeting regularly is like this is not cool this is too much stuff well, well, and and the, the the funniest part to me is I'm not even really the Twitter famous one. Claire is so much funnier, and a mu- Claire is a much more entertaining follower than I am. I I admit I, I followed I, her before I followed you, and you know followed you shortly after. But she was much more on my timeline during Sunday, so I was just like, yep, follow for sure. <laughs> she is but, very yeah. Funny, if, if you're looking for me, Twitter's uh Twitter's the the best place. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, that's it for us for today. Thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, 